real life novels that have been written about this game, like chronicles of things that have happened in this game. Whoa. And they're fascinating. This is a game that multiple people over the years have always said, like, this is a game that I always want to be hearing about, but I never want to play. <laughs> and I totally am with that. Like, Episode 13, recorded October 21st, 2021. All right. Um, so how, so how, how are you, Robert? Oh, pretty good, Richard. How are you doing? This is reminding. It's like, hey, that voice right there, track that voice as being Robert's voice. <laughs> track that voice as being Richard's voice. Mm-hmm. Not the one that said the each name, the one that referred to the other name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because... <laughs> Y'all probably don't know who the fuck we are, um, or 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 you might you might that might be only the people who are listening to this, uh, right? Hey Clay, <laughs> I don't know. Hi Clay, you don't know me. <laughs> uh, well, you know me more than I know you at this point, probably if you've listened to these recordings. That's, I guess that's that's valid. So, uh, yeah. So, let's see. Is there anything anything we want to we want to riff on? Um, oh yeah, I thought you I thought you were gearing up to start with something, but I I so I sent you that video. Yeah, so I wanted to bring that up a little bit. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, cool. Uh, so it was a it was a video of uh, a YouTube essayist. Yeah, yeah. Say? FD signifier. FD signifier. Yeah. And so all of his stuff is amazing he kind of like really popped off a few weeks ago or a month ago because he did a really good uh video essay about the bo burnham special that was the other one i went and watched and so and he has a i've I've, i just kind of binged and watched most of his stuff that he's put out the past year or so and all of his stuff is really i don't know if i've seen someone who who is able to say what is good about a thing and while also critiquing it yeah like mm-hmm. here's what's amazing about this yeah and and here's what i'm not qualified to critique and then right. here is the aspects that i feel are problematic about it and i'm going to unpack those yeah with you know and he's like a social you know he has like a master's degree in sociology or some shit like that so he he knows the fuck he's talking about <laughs> that checks out based on based on some of the shit he talks about yeah so but i i sent you I sent you the. Uh, you sent me part one. Part one of the of the Kanye the Kanye uh, videos that he that he put out because you had brought out brought up kayfabe a few weeks ago. Right. And I don't remember. Was it the what was it when we were talking about Ed? Is that the yeah? Context? I think it was. Okay. Ed Kowalczyk. Okay. I, Ed kayfabe Kowalczyk. <laughs> and so. Yeah. So anyway. I forgot. I forgot what I brought it up in terms of Ed f- about though. Because I think that you were present, you were sort of presenting the idea that like, is he? Do you think he's playing a character? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and I was very steadfast, like, fuck no, he is not. And um, right. And then you went and watched the interview, and you're like, no, he, no he's this, not. This, this is a, this is a real life. This is not fantasy. Um. Yeah. Okay. So that I remember that, and but yeah. So then I just happened to be watching this this uh, video, and he brought up he brought up kayfabe and all that stuff, and, and I was like, oh, this is what Robert was talking about. Right. 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 And uh, and I don't know. I just thought the concept was was really fascinating, and I thought it was really interesting that he sort of framed Kanye's whole career in 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 like wrestling wrestling terminology right and and that like what made him so refreshing at the beginning was that he didn't participate right in the kayfabe he, he didn't it wasn't that he because a, a big part of that whole idea is like being a character and then breaking it mm-hmm. so it's like a dramatic turn at a certain point uh-huh. but, but kanye didn't even he didn't even bother he didn't even want that right he was he was like i'm gonna talk you know like i'm you know, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about like being insecure and shit. I'm not going to talk about, I get, it's not, I'm going to, but I'm still using like the hip hop medium. Right. You know what I mean? And it, 
at like a, but yeah, it made me actually think of, I was like, okay, well, my brain started turning and like sort of thinking about like, started thinking about personalities in the music that I grew up with. And mm-hmm. like, okay, were there any, were there any moments where of, of people breaking this? Like, what if you take this modo- this methodology and apply it to other careers? And the first moment that, that stuck out to me just in my memory, because yeah. it was very impactful for me. And I don't know if this is, I'm not enough of a wrestling. I watched wrestling a lot when I was a kid, but I'm not a connoisseur of it. So I might not be, this you're, might not be the well, right. You, listen, you're better off for it. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs> oh man. Um, but I remember, and this would have been in like 2000, like 2004, five, six ish, somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. I came across like a, a, a snippet of an interview where this, uh, this radio station, they fucked up. This like hard rock, metal, whatever radio station, they fucked up because they had Corey Taylor on and oh. they said, we're going to let Corey Taylor play whatever Corey Taylor wants to play. Like, we're going to let Corey Taylor DJ uh-huh. this shit. Okay. And, and this would not be shocking now, but, you know. After the years of, of Stone Sour and just him being out there as a guy and all this. Well, and just people. Everything different from Slipknot, basically. Well, and even just the people's understanding of metal musicians in general. Like no one's no one's like really sh- like you've seen Lady Gaga perform with Metallica at this point. Like no one's mm. no one's like really surprised if when you talk to, you know, if you talk to Behemoth, you know, you talk to Nergal from Behemoth and he's like, "Oh, I really like The Weeknd." You know, no no one's like, "Oh, what do you mean?" Right. anymore. You know, no it's not scandalous anymore. Right, yeah. Um that is a thing that 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 Isan from Emperor had had talked about how much he was inspired by the weekend, but I use Nick oh, cool. because he's a little more famous figure, or whatever. <laughs> he's he's more palatable. I mean, whatever. <laughs> it's just how this shit's <laughs> falling out of my brain. But so Corey Taylor's on this radio station and he plays like South of Heaven or something. Like okay. something that's a little like a little heavier, but still sort of in their wheelhouse. They're like, all right, cool. We expect a Corey Taylor to play some heavy shit, right? And then he plays like Beat It. Right. You know, he plays fucking Michael Jackson. Um, and then he play I think then he played like some fucking like 70s Motown shit or something. And then maybe like Chris Isaac or something. I don't know. But I remember That's the one where I would be like, get the fuck off here. Cut this man. <laughs> but after Chris he Isaac. played the Michael Jackson song, they were like like their eyes were big and they were like uncomfortable and they were like, you can't play that on this station. Like, what do you, what do you mean you like this? I don't, oh, are we I, sure this is Corey Taylor? He always has the mask on. Yeah, we, don't we don't know what he know. looks like. We don't know what he looks like. Yeah. And, and they were, they were like legitimately like, not just like radio personality surprise. Like they were legitimately like, what do you, ah, <sighs> and like almost frustrated. <laughs> and, and Corey was like, man, they were disappointed. You got to dig what you dig. And and that that made a that made a huge that made a huge impact on me. It's because it, it, it was like in just like those sort of few words, it yeah. just sort of like, you know. But he he wasn't he wasn't trying to like be the guy in Slipknot, right? You know what I mean. And so in a sense, that's sort of like he's not walking around with that character, you right. know. And and I think that I think that in the '90s and in the '80s, you had metal guys who really or there was an expectation that you needed to do that um or that you needed to do that in between songs and that was a thing that we hated sure i mean up until the up and through the 2000s like that time period that that happened in is probably about a, a pretty good like uh break point for that kind of stuff right because like through new metal it was all that right 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 and i mean that's why we like strapping and glad so much because devin didn't part he refused to participate yeah. In being a normal metal front man. I mean, act while actively lampooning metal. Right. Like, really. Yeah. Like I remember seeing them at Fitz and like in between one of the songs, you know, he's just like, <laughs> you know, hey, you pieces of shit, go over there and buy our fucking t-shirts. You know, you want a fucking t-shirt, go buy our fucking t-shirts. <laughs> this oh. is called detox. <laughs> you know, like some, just something 
anyway, just because that's what everyone says, but they don't like take the next step and like break the stoicism of being metal metal guy. You're right. You know? And and so, but but yeah. Anyway, so that that was like a moment that 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 like occurred. The the, the, the first one that that came to me mm-hmm. of like b- breaking that. Like, oh, oh, you don't have to, you don't have to like carry around all that bullshit. Right. You know, like that kind of idea. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that was even part of like how we carried ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I don't know that it was necessarily, I don't know, maybe it was partially inspired by like Devin in particular. Cause I remember around that time we kind of got way into him or I got way into him at least. You had already been, uh, but I feel like I kind of had that the whole time. I just didn't just kind of a not give a fuck attitude towards that whole thing. Yeah, we didn't. It was really interesting because we didn't really. We were all, you know, you, me and Jeremy were on that page, but we had never talked about it. Right. Which was really interesting. But the first time that we got on stage as just a trio. That is naturally what came out of all of our fucking mouths. Yeah, uh, with that, like we didn't talk about it before we went on. We 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 weren't like, hey, let's go on stage and be irreverent fucks and not say any of the things that you're supposed to say when you're in a metal band. Right, exactly. We didn't. That wasn't. We didn't. We didn't may have a discussion about that, but that's just effortlessly what happened because once it was just the three of us, we just we knew each other so well and we knew that we were all on the same page and we knew that in a sense that there was nothing that any one of us could say that didn't also represent the other two. And so mm-hmm. I feel like that, that gave us a lot of it, it. You know, we all three of us felt very empowered to say whatever wacky shit fucking came to mind. Sure. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, absolutely. And so, but yeah, we really didn't care about trying to track as a metal band no. In our presentation, you know, like I wore socks with sandals and white and white t-shirts. All the, that that was yeah. like that was like my on-stage uniform, like a white fucking t-shirt. Yeah. And fucking, you know, sand, sandals like these, but with socks, because <laughs> it like it made playing drums easier or something or some bullshit that I thought at the time, <laughs> you know, or whatever. But I found some footage. I was like, oh god. <laughs> oh yeah, I vividly remember. You know, but. Uh, but uh yeah so the uh the whole the, the whole idea like i i love that that video uh was presented and and he wove the the wrestling analogy in there and it, i i haven't watched part 2 yet but it, it really fit <laughs> it really does and it's it's really i i hear that analogy come up a lot from people who i follow who are wrestling fans mm, because uh-huh. it's it's highly applicable it's like to really anything in the entertainment industry. Yeah. You know, especially music. Yeah. Because music is so, um, you know, it's different with something like acting because you're like, well, I'm pretending to be that, that care. It's, it's, it's understood. But when you're making music, music is so personal. You're expected to be that thing. Right. And so in this video, when he points out, uh, that, you know, late eighties, early nineties, uh, like gangster rap mm-hmm. was absolutely that. I never thought of that. Oh, really? And like, not because it just, not because it couldn't penetrate like my, the, uh, the thoughts that I had of that, of those artists or that time or anything like that. Uh-huh. But I grew up, I was like, you know, uh, seven years old ish around that time, 10 years old when I first started like understanding that that was even a thing mm-hmm. and may as well have been real to me. I didn't fucking know wrestling was real enough to me at the time. Sure. Uh, so I just took it at face value. I'm sure. Basically like sure. NWA is probably drug dealers or gangsters or whatever the fuck you want to say. Right. As, right, as, a, right. as a little white kid looking at, you know, dangerous looking black guys. Right. Well, and it didn't help the, the political climate of the time as well, where, Every almost every time you saw, you know, if there like, any time you saw the news or you saw you saw the show Cops or you saw anything like that, like totally, you know what I mean. Like chances are, you were, 
just by existing in the media environment that was the 90s, you saw black men in handcuffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you there, were, there was no way you were going to escape seeing that. And so, you know. Yeah, so it, it just may as well have been real to me at the time. And yeah. then as time went on, like, I just didn't really think about that aspect of it again. Uh-huh. Uh, but then you you have this knowledge, if you're a wrestling fan, you have this knowledge of that aspect of things. And so I, I think I, like, innately knew that probably mm-hmm. somewhere along the line, but I just kind of never thought of it again until right. he brought it up in this video. I was like, fucking hey, absolutely, that's correct. That's amazing. Right, and and I mean, and just to stick with, like, the Slipknot analogy and whatnot, like, there's, like, so many songs in there about, like, killing people or wearing their yeah. skin or whatever you know slit your throat and fuck the wound and, and none of us were like well you know cory taylor really slits throats and fucks wounds he's a wound fucker like none of us not for a second not for a second did we think that because that wasn't the point you know to uh, like you know because th- that that music you know what i mean like it wasn't it um we weren't buying into the danger of it, I guess. Like we were buying into the intensity of the expression. Right. And so, and whereas maybe a lot of people that were like, maybe a lot of like white kids who were buying gangster rap were buying into, no, this person really is this or whatever. You I, know? I think a lot of people were buying in, buying Slipknot and saying, oh, that's fucking cool. I want to slit someone's throat and fuck the wound. Like, hmm. I think a lot of people were legitimately, they didn't think that Corey Taylor did that, but I think that's like aspirational in a weird, huh. sick way to a lot of people. Uh, like, I, cause I can totally, I feel like I've heard people just say, like, s- just be into that, like, kind of extreme aspect of, of lyrical content of songs like that. Hmm. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Like I never was, so I don't. I can't. I can't put myself into the headspace either. Right. Yeah. Of. Yeah, and I guess I can't put my. I can't take myself out of the headspace of someone who is. Um, making music, and and hearing that music, as a lyricist, or or you know as someone who's who's also writing lyrics and trying to write music. Yeah. I can't, it's, so I don't, I don't know what it's, I don't know what it's like to listen to Slipknot without having any intentions of, of expressing the same emotions musically right? that they're trying to express. So I, you know what I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, that's, that's for any, any metal band throughout, like just sticking with metal, any metal band throughout the years, like as time went on, like Black Sabbath was controversial back then. And you look mm. at it and it's like fucking funny at this time. Judas Priest. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Maiden, the same shit. Like, right, sure. All, although there's still the, somehow here we are, like forty years later, and, and Iron Maiden is still controversial. Are they, they really? There was like a a, a principal who like. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, she, it's so silly. The principal of the school liked Iron Maiden yeah. and posted on Instagram about it, and parents were like, "That's Not devil in my worship, school. That's bro. six, six, six. That's devil worship." Busting out that old chestnut, That's and then like, kids wow. were like. Kids put together a petition to be like, no, this is fucking cool, man. It, it, Leave the principal alone. At so, dicks. parents, <laughs> like, wow, we're still there. Um, yeah, but uh, but uh, in a in the context of metal, and it's interesting because it was happening around the same time as gangster rap. Um, that that did have that image of like, oh, those guys are actual fucking trouble. Is the is the Norwegian black metal right. movement. That happened in the early '90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and a lot of people. It's it's hard for me to really put my finger on because we're just a little too old to have really um, understood the real context of that right when it happened. Because I started getting into black metal around '96 and '97, and so that there's a totally different context going on. Um, by then. By then, everyone's out of prison except for Varg, and and people are making records, and 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 black metal is getting much more progressive, and and you know people are are letting go, you know, like people have stopped wearing the corpse paint. It's you know what I mean, and it's 
Right. The big movers in the genre have already let go of all the things that seem, you know, like they're 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 trying to make really good sounding recordings, like all of that stuff. That was the charm and the allure of what was going on in like ninety to ninety three. Yeah. The guys have the big movers in the genre have already sort of moved on. Um but that was a big allure of that genre in those days, you know, of like, oh yeah. well, oh I'm gonna fucking order these records from this label, Death Like Silence from Norway. The guy, you know, the singer killed himself in this band and they're you know what I mean? And right. You know, the guitarist took part of his skull, or the drummer wears part of his skull as a necklace, and the guitarist took pictures of his body and used it as an album cover. And it was very much, you know, it felt, and then some people still to this day, like they'll go back and listen, like some some casuals, I'll call them that. Um, like people who listen to black metal, but don't listen to other forms of metal. You know, they'll, okay. y- they exist. And so they'll still go back to those early Burzum records and they're like, you know, can you feel the pull? You know, and they're, you know, like the, it's, <laughs> it, 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 it sonically represents that misanthrope and that, that like darkness and all that sort of shit to them, you know, because huh. it's like, oh, well, the, the, that, that music was made by a guy who murdered somebody. Like it, he, he like imparted his energy into this music, basically. Right, right, right. Okay. And I'm like, no, dude, that's just a dick bag making music by himself. Um, like it's cool, <laughs> but whatever, you know. But uh, but yeah, but there was a lot of that that was like, oh, well, these guys are are the real thing. You know, these guys are really burning churches. These guys are right. really murdering people. These guys, these guys, capital W worship satan you know or or whatever yeah capital w lowercase s though <laughs> satin they, they worship satin satin uh another band i always think of in that vein is Bruharia. Mm. because mm. i guess mostly because of the album covers they're just like disgusting oh well, yeah and they're just they're just kind of like edge lords though yeah um, Cause, i mean wasn't... well i don't know if i'm using that term in the same way that other people that, that other people are using it now but they're just they're intentionally like button pushers. That's the same co- context as it's used today. You know? Yeah, of like, that works. You know, like, oh, man, it'd really piss people off if we made, like, a Trump song. Well, let's make a Trump song. Mm. You know, like that. Yeah. They're, they're they're kind of in that okay. vein. You know what I mean? Um, I don't mean that. I'm not trying to, like, throw shade at them because Brewer here's Brewer, Brewer his mel. Brewheria. The, there's one record of theirs that that I have that I like that I love and it's fucking great. There's I, I gotta just remember the album covers of like a dead body or like a head on railroad tracks or some shit. You know? Sure, yeah, like a shock value. It, yeah, exactly. To it and whatnot. But, and I felt like that was meant to give that same sort of idea, but I don't feel like they represented that as a band otherwise. Really. No, no. Um so. there's a whole I don't know, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a whole sh- subgenre of music like Mexican hip hop now that's like, hey yeah, like we're Oh, where it's like actual gangsters where they kidnap people or whatever the fuck. Or, or some shit like that. Or like we make music for people in cartel and shit like that. Oh sure, yeah. Like okay. that. And so you know hand wild. Y- yeah, it's unsurprising. Ri- it's but... risky business apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. So <laughs> fuck. Um there was a guy that I, um, a place in town that I would go to get T-shirts printed at, and he was like telling me a story about some shit like that, and he was like, "Dude, I keep I keep trying to tell this guy, like, no nah, man, you're gonna fucking die, <laughs> like you need don't don't play this kind of music with those people." <laughs> Dude, I've, yeah, probably good advice. <laughs> some shit like that. It's probably some pretty good advice. Uh, um, was Max Cavalera in that band? Wasn't he? No. Who was in that band? Dino. Dino. Okay. Yeah, D- Dino Raymond Raymond was in and out of it. Uh, um, okay. So many people have been in and out yeah. of it over the years, but 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 Dino is okay. like the was like the figurehead of it for a long time. Dino is why they got signed. Okay, I can yeah, that makes sense. You know, so but uh, anyway, yeah, this this fucking video about Kanye was fascinating, and I didn't I didn't really know a lot of this, but it was interesting be, because as as it sort of unfolded like what he was going to talk about in the video and i started remembering like how did i first discover 
Kanye and like hear about him and all that shit. And so I just paused the video and like thought about it for a little bit. And I was like, I'm pretty sure whatever year it was that Through the Wire came out, that was the first I ever saw of Kanye. And from what I remember, it was basically like he showed up with this video and this song that everyone was talking about pre, you know, pre social media. Somehow I had heard about this guy. Mm. He had like a built in buzz. Mm. And his fucking video was a buzz clip on MTV. So, mm-hmm. like, he just, he just showed up, like, guns blazing, already, like, expecting to be huge. Right. Is the, is the impression that I remember having back then. Right. And I was like, oh, this fucking video. Oh, man, he's, like, in a car accident and just rapping through the, wi- like, wires in his mouth. That's pretty fucking crazy. And I remember having that impression back then. Mm-hmm. And, like, sure enough, he just goes... He he goes right into that and I'm like that's exactly the case. I'm like wow, right? I'm not I'm not as wrong as I thought I might have been. <laughs> my first my first first time I was aware of his existence was the uh, seeing him on the the, the Katrina hurricane. the Katrina thing. Mike you know? Myers, yeah, yeah. Which at the time, <clears throat> you know, I was, you know, I'm I think I've talked about this before, but mm. um, but yeah, at the time I was I was like, oh my god, what a silly man. <laughs> What a silly, silly, misinformed man was how I was was my read on it at the time. Um, that's not how I feel about it now. <laughs> um, and and so and so that's what's I I really uh, I really appreciated because yeah, like that's how black people felt. They're, 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 they're like they felt like the president didn't care about them, and he voiced that. Yeah, and it's just crazy to think that at that. So it was two thousand five. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy to think that at that time, because it. I don't know. Like it seems like that's not an insane thing to say anymore. It's not. But right? at the time, at the time, it was wild. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. It's. It's difficult. Like, cause you watch it now. Like you see that clip now, and you're like, "Fucking Kanye, fucking spitting truth." You're like, "Fucking yes." Yeah. You know, but watch Mike Myers look scared as shit, and then they cut over to Chris Tucker, and he's like, "I don't know what the fuck happened." <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that it's. <laughs> and so, I. Uh, but at the time, it was, it it would it just felt since like sensational nonsense. Yeah, is that the is how it felt at the time? If I'm being absolutely honest, it felt like Guns N' Roses being drunk, accepting a Grammy or something. Like it was just like some some out of touch, you know, famous celebrity mm. making an ass on live TV. Mm. It was it was in that that category, um, which it most definitely is not. <laughs> I, I mean, I kind of wonder if maybe because I, I I probably felt some of that too at the time. I don't really remember anymore. It's been fucking sixteen years since that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, I wonder if some aspect of that was like, it's a hurricane relief fund. So maybe to us, it didn't feel like the place to say something like that, but, but also it was the exact right place to say something like that. Exactly. It was, it was, it was, it was the exact right place to say something like that. And, and I, I really appreciated how FD sort of framed it in the context of the time of, you know, like Kanye knows he's replaceable. Right. At this. And, and once he pointed that out, you can see him like he's nervous as fuck up there. Right. And it's like, it, it, you're like, man, what a fucking courageous thing to do. Yeah. And so, you know, Ugh. and I, I just, I really appreciate it. You'll, you know, if you get around to watching part two, oh, I'm going to watch part two for it, sure. It's fantastic as well. But yeah, I mean, I subbed to this dude's channel. I'm going to watch all this shit. It, it's all good. It's, good, it's good all stuff. amazing. Uh, but it, uh, he's so good at at critiquing critiquing what there is to critique and really taking someone to task not letting mm-hmm. them off light but also not but also acknowledging what is good and what they you know like he did some really good videos about I mean he did this kind he did kind of did that in the Bo Burnham video yeah he did that when he talked about Hamilton you know stuff like that okay. and so um and all sorts of other things but i you know and i and i also i just really appreciate his perspective on all that because you know i kanye's whole career i'm very ignorant of and yeah. and like i i don't 
you know, like I had talked about, like I had said before, like I'm not going to critique, I'm not going to critique all of his missteps and whatnot because I don't have context for it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so I just, because, you know, but, but I will critique the fuck out of Dave Mustaine or Ted Nugent (laughs) or, or, you know, or, or some some guys like that that are just sort of perpetually showing their ass because yeah. I, n- I understand the context and the genre of the or you know that, that within you know and I don't and I, don't, I you know everything that Kanye did happened like I was completely ignorant of it as it was happening you know yeah. and so but but yeah I, I don't know it's it's that dude makes makes great shit but yeah all in the all in the context of you know kayfabe and babyface and heel turn and and heat i think is like another term that he uses that might that might that might come up more in part two maybe i'm not as familiar with that one maybe uh he did bring he i think he brought up a work and a shoot at some point Mm. did you catch that one Mm -mm. so it's like if you're if you're doing if you're if you're performing some action and it's not it's not maybe the representative of what you're actually going for. Mm-hmm. It's if you're playing somebody, mm. basically, mm. if you're just talking shit and you're not going to actually do anything about it. Oh, okay. It's like a, it's like a work. Oh, okay. But if you're being serious, it's I a shoot. see. Oh, okay. I might have missed that part. I might so, miss that part. Did did the was the Taylor Swift in part one? That stuff. Did that stuff come up in part no, one? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Okay. That, that hadn't happened yet. I like I like how he handled handled that too because and what i thought was interesting was in my memory my ignorant you know memory was that the katrina thing and like the taylor swift thing that he did like taylor swift got like a video a vma or, or, yeah. or a, you know and he just like beyonce made a great video but this this was the famous i'm gonna let you finish but Beyonce but, was the album of the year, whatever the fuck it was. Yeah, what, whatever, whatever he did, he's drunk as shit and stuff like that. And it shows just sort of my my ignorance and my sort of outlook that him that what he said said about you know about George Bush not caring about black people with mm-hmm. Katrina, and then him doing that seemed the same to me. So it's like, oh yeah, well Kanye does crazy shit, whatever. Oh, is that that guy that said that? Oh yeah, okay, well whatever. And they're completely different. <laughs> and sure, I mean, I can see how you can get to that point, though. Like, if you only ever experience what he does through news clips, you know, right, right. And then um, you just see a dude saying outrageous shit at inappropriate, quote unquote, inappropriate times. Sure, 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 sure. But uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that if you watch it because I, I really yeah. like how he how he sort of unpacks it. Uh, cool. But um, but yeah, great, great, great stuff. FD signifier, all of his stuff's amazing. Yeah, so, yeah. but uh, I guess, oh yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So you brought up kayfabe in the context of Ed Kowalczyk. Yes. And so like this idea that oh well maybe all this like spiritual woo whatever I like to, you know the ladies love us kind of bullshit is, is a, is like a character that he feels he needs to. You know, like there's an illusion that he's creating so that the audience is able to buy into it as well. And there mm-hmm. and so, you know, if I think about that a little bit and I it, it it's hard for me to I can't really throw much about it so much at him, but I feel like I can throw some of it at someone who's a pastor. And Okay. And because there's a lot of that similar energy. There's a that that Ed was putting out that you would get from certain kinds of pastors i can see that and so there is a there is a weird there's like a weird sort of you know character and set of behaviors and a thing that you have to present if you're going to you know give a sermon and you're going to be and you're going to be a pastor and like in like you know one of the you know hipper non-denominational whatever right churches and where the teens go yeah 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 and so where they got the rock where they got the rock guitars yeah turns around that chair and sits sits on it backwards and pulls his tie over and says listen up guys oh you don't let's rap no no tie no tie no tie no tie Tie comes off 
and but 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 sort of needing to needing to talk about so for ed it would be talking about being humble and being grateful and and saying like these kinds of things Uh so that you as the as the fan can sort of put a check in that box like oh well he's not an egotistical douchebag but but if he was to say no i mean i'm the fucking best it would break that that character yeah you know whereas in other in other genres of music you're expected to do that a slip number the heaviest fucking band in the world we're gonna tear your fucking face off okay cool yeah but if live is like we're the we're the spiritualist band in the world we're gonna enlighten the fuck out of you <laughs> <laughs> You know, every everyone would be like, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, really, it's, how many how many genres of music are there that you can actually get away with that in? Like, I feel like I feel like gangster rap and metal are kind of the it's kind of very it. broadly. Those are kind of the two because most most genres don't deal in extremes in that same way. That's a, I feel like that's a solid point. I thought that was a solid point. Well, it, it is interesting. I like mean, country. That... Like, what are you gonna do? I'm a I'm a rope cows the fuck out of this motherfucker. I, you know, I don't. That's. I'm gonna I'm gonna sing the shit out of someone else's song. Yeah. I'm gonna leave the shit out of my wife. <laughs> yeah, it. Uh, there is. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna sincere you to death. Uh, yeah, like yeah, and uh. Well, and I think that it's also that metal and I mean all all forms of all forms of music that have men performing do this. But uh, but I, I feel like, you know, may, maybe gangster rap and and metal are the ones that it's sort of explicitly built in to yeah. the, the, the the lyrical content right of 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 men doing violence. Yeah, and that's so, what I mean. Like it, it, it backs that up. Yeah, like it's what the music is about. Yeah, you know. Whereas if that's not what Queens of the Stone Age is about, but it's but uh, so when you get into that, you have like a spectrum. So you can have Josh Homme say he's going to kick someone's ass, and everyone's like, "Well, you know, he's a dick," or whatever. Or you can have Isaac Brock from Modest Mouse like make fun of a girl in the front row and call her fat or something. Like, oh, well, he's a jerk, you know, or whatever. <laughs> Um, I did see that actually happen. Man. I'm not. I didn't ever. I, I've never seen Josh Homme perform, so I don't know. But I've heard he's a dick. I, I mean, know. when you get a restraining order, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um. But 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 yeah. So so yeah. There's a. I don't know. That's an interesting. I haven't really thought about that a lot. Like sort of the. The, the, the idea, because it, it's not like a char- it, character is too strong of a word. And I guess that's maybe where the kayfabe thing, where that becomes useful. Because it's it's not just a character that you're expected to play. It's sort of It's a, like an archetype. Yeah, it's like a set of, or it's almost like a, a set of permissible behaviors maybe. Yeah. And, and when you break it, it, you can do it with maximum, you know, it has maximum effect. But, it, but it's, I don't know, like the dance between them. Is, is something, you know. Because the thing is, like, uh, a lot of times, especially if you're not very good at staying in, quote-unquote, character or whatever, like, once you break it, it's hard to go back. Mm, because sure. Because the whole idea is people, you know, consciously or otherwise, buying into it. And that's kind of what fucking Ed did with that fucking Five album. It's because... <laughs> Cause what I, cause what I said, cause what I, the joke I made a second, I was like, we're the most spiritualist band and we're going to enlighten the fuck out of you. That's exactly what he says in the lyrics Yep. <laughs> to fucking like in the consciousness of each and every sentient being. Like he says that right, he right. actually says that. And so it, it just, it, it, it breaks the whole fucking thing apart. Yeah. And it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, Oh my God. Like you're, because for that thing to do that thing, that like, you know, pseudo spiritual, you know, like secular, you know, like like secular praise and worship music thing or whatever. You gotta be humble. You have to. You have to. You have to track as that. Right. You know, like you just like a pastor can't come out and and be. You know, are you ready to hear the best fucking pastor in this city? 
Like you can't you can't say that. It's like what like what was Trump's fucking line? Like I'm I'm more humble than this dude. I'm the most <laughs> humble. Like that kind of shit. <laughs> Motherfuckers actually said that. <laughs> you know, and so did you see um there was a story in the New York Times a couple weeks ago about who was the who was the bad Oh fuck, who was the bad author? Who was the bad author friend? I think what? Okay. So, quick quick rundown. Like basically a story came out and it was told from two different sides of these two different women. Okay. Who were both authors. Okay. And one of them uh wrote a story about the other one and said that the story wasn't about her when it actually contained like extremely detailed information about the story that the first one had told the second second one had told the other one. Okay. So this woman, this woman like donates her kidney and she creates like a Facebook group and invites people she knows into it. And, or maybe she's already in it or something, like, whatever. She's in a Facebook group and she makes it a point to tell them, Hey, I've donated my kidney and I want more people to know about this so that they'll, you know, maybe think about doing it themselves. I want to get the word out. But what she's actually doing is like, she did a she did like a virtuous thing and she wants she wants like affirmation for it. Okay. Right? It's the same sort of thing. Like, look how look how generous I was with my own body. Mm. Uh and then that that's really the most imp- that's really the most important part of what you're getting at here. Or what to relate it to what you were getting at. Uh the story's fucking wild and it goes crazy places and everyone in it was terrible people. Okay. But yeah, you've got you've got people like that who will do a a generous virtuous thing for primary purpose if not sole purpose of like I want I want validation that what I did mm-hmm. was so amazing and look at what I did. Right. Uh and it kind of feels like the same thing there to me of like yeah, I could see that. I could, I could see that. I, I, I see the connection you're making of, like, Ed, Ed rapping about how, you know, here in the, here in the West and here in the East and here in the country, and I don't ever think the world can dream like me. It's a little, you know, it's, it's, you know, like you're wanting me to buy your record, and you want me to come to your concerts, and you want me to, and you want me to like raise my hand and clap and cheer and sing along with you of like, yeah. No one will dream like you, Ed, because, man, you really, you'll meditate with bums on the street. You're going to ride a Harley through the heart of danger, Ed. <laughs> you, exactly, you, yeah. oh, man, I'm just so happy to be in the room with you, Ed. Yeah. Right. And and sort of, you know, there is a sort of, yeah, I don't, I don't. If you're really doing that shit, you're not going to fucking care what anyone thinks about the fact that you did that shit right 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 if you're doing it for the right reasons yeah and it's i i i get a little for i get a little, legitimate reasons i should say i get a little prickly whenever people bring up the the whole virtue signaling phrase um because that's kind of what what you're saying um because the the context because the way that the the way that that phrase is used often mm-hmm. is to is to negate a, a good thing that a person yeah did or is talking about right i mean yeah in in the internet discourse these days it has become a derogatory term right right because, when used by certain people right and so i don't while i absolutely agree that that there is that there is an aspect of that that happens you could say that there's an aspect of that anytime someone does any social act y- yeah. you could you could argue it to that effect because yeah, yeah totally because a, vir- a virtue is a, is a fluid subjective thing you know um depending on what you, what you think is virtuous is going to depend on your values. Right. And so you saying, I'm not going to take the vaccine because I believe in freedom, blah, 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 blah. That's, that's, I mean, 
you're you think because you think that's a virtue and you sharing a post about it is you signaling that right how how you know what i mean so the term kind of doesn't mean anything really when you think about it but the way that it's used is is always to is always to throw shade at someone when there's when they're talking almost always when they're talking about a minority being oppressed black people trans people people of color women whatever you know you're just virtue signaling because you're talking about you know because you have a black lives matter sign in your yard mm. or whatever yeah you know and so it's just a it's just a i don't <laughs> I don't fuck with that phrase because I used to fuck with it years ago whenever all whenever I learned about all these things you know when what I when everything I knew about trans people for instance came didn't come from tra- from trans people describing what their lives were like or what they were going through mm-hmm. It came from Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson bitching about trans people. Uh, yeah, okay. And so, you know, because I was in that bubble for a really, really long time. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's that's when I first heard that term, virtue signaling. And I was like, whoa, that makes so much sense, you know. Yeah. I, and I got and, you there. And, you know, you probably didn't fall in on the rabbit hole, that kind of bullshit. But for me at the time... I was like, yeah, these people don't mean anything. Like they don't actually mean what they're saying. Right. They're just trying to have power or they're just trying to shame other people or they're just trying to do this or whatever, 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 which is total bullshit. And it totally, it totally negates that. It totally negates that that there are people out there that have a different experience than you and that they have legitimate problems that you don't have, that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. And so, so yeah, fucking virtue signaling. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's the MO of people like that is just taking, taking something like that and, and turning it around in the other direction as extreme as you possibly can. Sure. Sure. But, but you brought this up because you were talking about like the, who's the bad author friend. Yeah. And so was that like, because you were just – that was just to talk about like the, the virtue the, – like the... Yeah, it was just that – it was just part of that story. Oh, okay. Okay. The story was wild as fuck. Like the lady posted in the Facebook group that what she did. She donated her kidney. Uh-huh. Nobody really responded to her. So because no one responded to her, she was like, why hasn't anyone responded to me? Like I did a really great thing here and no one's saying anything about it. My fr- This one person didn't like that post. I wonder why she didn't like that post. I thought I did a pretty great thing, but she didn't like that post. I'm going to ask her why she didn't like that post. Hey, why didn't you like this post? Oh, she didn't answer me. Oh, that's weird. She didn't answer me. Hey, I just, I sent you a message. Why didn't you like that post? (laughs) Oh, I did see it. It was fine. It was, yeah, very great thing. And then so later on, that lady who she sent the message to asking why she didn't like the post wrote a story in which a lady donates her kidney. (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, what a mess. But, so these were, this was a white lady who donated her kidney. And like an Asian American lady who wrote the story. Okay. But when the Asian American lady wrote the story, she like framed it. She somehow was able to frame it in the context of uh, like an immigrant story. Okay. And somehow, I forget exactly the details, but basically it took on a different, it took on a different tone from just like if an American lady did it. Okay. Um, th- like there were details, but it quickly gets lost in this bullshit cat fight back and forth. I see. And it's just insanity. But and everyone turns out to be shitty because, yes, she stole the lady's story and made a lot of money off of it, or was poised to make a lot of money off of it. Mm-hmm. But the first lady like went crazy and torpedoed this lady's career. Oh. And they both lost a lot of money with lawyers, and it was just really stupid. Wow. Yeah, it was a, it was a batshit insane story, and it was just like a nice. Wow. A nice, terrible read. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a, yeah. All right. Yeah. So well, that seems like a, a good place to talk about the, 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 the topic of the episode. Topic du jour. So, uh, this is, this is, uh, more, more video game music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. So I knew 
like we we had kind of brought up you know wanted to do a video game i think it was probably an episode initially uh but the more i looked at what music i wanted to include uh-huh. it quickly ballooned into let's say four episodes it's kind of what i have uh I, I'm, plotted out at this point i'm so down cool and so this is part two of that um <laughs> so sorry i'm just i'm <laughs> just dropping shit all over the place over there <laughs> yeah i'm uh, so so notes. the you got notes? No. Oh, you just gonna write stuff down? No. No. You just what are you doing? <laughs> I need a place to put this tea bag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Because I'm gonna reuse this cup for a beer. <laughs> okay. Oh. I thought you I thought you were gonna say you were gonna reuse the tea bag, no. like at a later date. No. Good. Okay. I'm I'm more okay with that then. No. No. Because. I have this like rule that I don't keep trash bags. I don't keep a trash can in my studios. Okay. Um, or my rehearsal studios because inevitably what happens, it's, it'll be less of a problem here in my own personal studio. But what would happen when you share a rehearsal studio with other people, especially if you have multiple bands, what's going to happen mm. is someone's going to rehearse there on Friday uh-huh. and some asshole's going to leave their Burger King in the trash can. Oh. And then you're not going to rehearse on Saturday like you normally do because you're out of town. And then... So this is like two weeks have gone by. Yeah. And so point. you're going to have like two week old Burger King when you go back because someone, you know, someone left it in there. And okay. so I would just... I would just, no, there's just not a trash can in here. You take that shit outside. You take it to the fucking, you take that shit to the. Take that shit with you. Yeah. You go throw that away in the dumpster. You go throw that, you take that home. I don't fucking care. Okay. That's better because I was kind of half expecting like, you're going to like look in there and there's going to be used condoms in there or something. Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah. So. (laughs) Not with the bands I played with. (laughs) Burn, motherfuckers. Um, Anyway. Uh, th- yeah. So, so this is this is episode two of this shit. So the the first episode was like the nineties. This episode is two thousand and one to two thousand and eight. Okay, is how it how it kind of shook out. Uh, because the other two sections I have planned have a lot a lot of music in them. Oh, okay. Uh, so this playlist was like two hours, I think. Two, yes, a little yes. over two it hours. Was two I want to say. Mm-hmm. And I was I was worried. By the time I got to uh, right around there, I think I got it up to like two and a half. And I was like, this is unwieldy already. E- even giving it to you like four or five days in advance, I was like, this is a lot. So so I had to cut it back. And that's why I divided it up into four instead of just three parts. I think that's wise. Okay. Um, and I because I, I feel like an hour and a half to two hours is 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 the, you know... I feel like an hour to an hour, and or and I feel like an hour and a half is the sweet spot for a playlist length of, mm-hmm. for for what we're doing. Two hours is okay, but okay. but going too much far. I mean, that's sort of how I felt when we were making the sort of you know proto musicology playlists too. Right, and that's what led me to try to draw the lines where it was. It was just like, well, if I if I talk about this then i have to include these and now this fucking thing is three hours long right and exactly and that's just not because you just can't you just can't talk about that much music and that's it's a lot of music to listen to and process and have form opinions on you know right and that's a little different when we're talking about music that we sort of know or have like a reference for right you know because well, this it, is the alabama song that you really liked and this is the one that you really <laughs> like okay right because at that point you're just like remembering shit Right, but all of the, every single piece of music on here is new for me. Exactly. So, uh, and so, just to reiterate, like, what I did with this is this is not meant to be like. Here is a snapshot of what video game soundtracks looked like in this time period, or it's not meant to be. Here are the greatest hits that people would rank. Here's not what Rolling Stone ranked as the <laughs> ten best of game or, soundtracks, right. or the most influential, or the most the it's, it's not the most anything ish. It's not. And actually, I to like refresh myself when I was trying to remember if I was leaving things out of these lists, I went and just looked for like best uh best game soundtracks of the two thousands or whatever, mm-hmm. and to see what comes up. And some fucking list came up, and it was like. 
it was like Rock Band and Grand Theft Auto and Guitar Hero and it was like you know licensed soundtracks right. and music that you pl- music games not music in games but m- games about music and i was like you're fucking just missing the point that's a totally different like there's yeah. a totally different like you don't talk about you don't talk about like the placement of house of the rising sun in a martin scorsese movie <laughs> and then put that next to you know like john williams and, and like yeah <laughs> <laughs> right, this, they're, they're, they have to do with music. They're music, and, yeah. and they're used in a movie. But right, but but they're, it's very different. There's very different. There's a very different process going on there. Right, uh, it's a different thing happening when Trent Reznor writes a score than when Rob Zombie like places the perfect obscure <laughs> '70s tune right. during a kill scene or something. You know, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, anyway, this isn't meant to be those things, and it's it's more meant to be just like, here is the music that I latched onto that I think was important and that affected me. Right, I'm glad you said that because that's that's kind of the whole purpose and premise of this whole thing because I, I have no interest in being a, a, a journalist. And... Or it's it's not even that I have no interest. It's, I, should, I shouldn't be able to do it very well, and and so I actually have extreme interest. I, just suck <laughs> I at would it. love to be able to do that, but I just you know, and so I don't. This isn't about. There's nothing. That's why I wanted to frame a frame all the things that we that we talk about here on music, or not all of it, but most of it we talk about on music as someone's personal interaction with with music yeah and ultimately i think that's what's more interesting agreed agreed because i can't it's just so hard you know you to to pin down okay well what are the most influential x albums or 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 whatever and i mean and that's just such like to say that in an authoritative way that's i mean you're talking like phd like you're talking like a dissertation yeah, that's level research, of, right? That's not a, a fun conversation, <laughs> right? But if you say like, "Hey, what are, what are some of the most important records to you when you were growing up?" That's you can you can speak with a we we can speak with authority yeah. about that. I know the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I, my question. <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't even I don't even know by you know what metrics you would judge the most influ or the the whatever ist. Yeah. In a, in a, you know, in a grander sense, you know, there's a, so there's a video game website that I followed for like a decade called giant bomb. And every year they've done their game of the year at the end of the year. And what they do is they sit down in a room around a table like this and just talk about the games that came out that year. And they end up, they end up doing categories like different stupid categories, Mm -hmm. uh, usually pretty irreverent. Uh, but at the end, the last thing they always do is take the list of all the games they all liked and they talk them down to 10 and then they rank those 10 hmm. and it kind of becomes a bloodbath after a while because it's just like inane bullshit. Like, and they know what it is, but it's fun to listen to sometimes. Sure. Sure. And sure, so sure. for, for a long time, people were like, you guys should do like a game of the generation, like fuck game of the year, game of the whole generation, game of the past decade, do that shit. Uh huh. And they just like refused for a long time because they're like, it's fucking impossible. What are you talking about? We barely right. get away with this. Right. And this is just, you know, a yearly thing. Uh, and so they eventually, what they did was sat down and just rehashed all of their previous game of the years and uh, how they would have ranked them today, mm. which was pretty interesting to listen to. Sure, yeah, yeah. That that is like a, that that might be like a fun thing to sort of to sort of do is look at like metal albums of the year from like ninety five to two thousand ten or something. Yeah, and sort of like, you know. Uh, Man, like it, it, as I feel like there's a lot more that goes into enjoying a video game in some ways than an album. Yes, but I feel like ranking music is impossible. It makes even less sense than ranking video <laughs> games. It's like it maybe is the least sensical art. I, you know, I, I would. Do you think that that is because there is so much more? technical things that 
like there there are technical things that can be objectively bad about a video game. There are technical things that can be objectively bad about an album too. <sighs> I mean, but not really though. At, I mean, if an album has shitty production quality and they meant to. And, and like any album that's going to make it that you're going to be talking about a year after you listen to it is, you know, like you're, you're going to be no, no one was bringing up songs of black mountain in an album of the year conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so that's true. That's true. It, it, yeah. I mean, video games are still young enough to where we can still kind of keep count of kind of how many that we're, we're just now starting to like lose count mm. of how mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. like there are thousands that come out per year at this point. And it, but if uh, uh, five ten years ago it was like there are like three point five, thirty five hundred games on Steam and you can mm-hmm. count them. Right. Not anymore though. It's too many. Right. Well, and it's like because I said, man, you know, if you're playing a game, there's because of that interface, there's just so many things that can go wrong, that can. It's like, well, I mean, you know what happens once you get to that point in the game. Shit, you know, like they didn't, they they haven't fixed those bugs or they haven't this or the controls are real shitty or, but the game, or like the gameplay is really good, but the story sucks or the story is amazing, but they, and so there's all these, it seems so much more complicated. Definitely. Because Plus it's interactive. So you can break it for yourself. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It being, and I think that like music is not really interactive. It's right. It's passive. Yeah. So. But it's much more like a movie or like they're doing it at you more than mm-hmm. you are participating in it. I think a book is kind of like in between because that happens a lot in your mind. That's that's fair. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that would be pretty wild to, to think about like albums of the year list. Albums of the year list is so weird. Like who do I, Pitchfork, I guess, does that still probably? Rolling Stone? I mean, I a know. lot of like metal, metal sites and metal okay. albums and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I, all my whole focus is is you know my lens is always through the metal scene or whatnot even though there's other other forms of music that i really care about they just don't no there's, there's no like blabbermouth equivalent for jam bands <laughs> <laughs> okay just, just people like people like people of that community are really really interested in going to those shows but they're not really interested in those people sure <laughs> probably not interested in those albums either maybe to an extent that is a thing that is a that is a, almost a thing too within the scene of uh within that scene that that i but that i personally was sort of trying like whenever small deal whenever we were making our record because i i feel mm. like <laughs> mm, i mm. I feel like there is a wide gap between the experience of seeing a really great live, you know, funk jam band and listening to the album that yeah. that they're touring to support on. I feel like there's a really, really wide gap between those things. Mm-hmm. And so... And... I don't think it has to be that wide. I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I'm. 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 I don't want to like just sound like I'm just start talking shit. I don't know how to. I don't know how to say anymore without sounding like I'm just talking shit. Because I'm. I'm certainly not. Like I love these albums. I buy these albums. I, I'm inspired and influenced by these albums. Yeah. But the experience of seeing it live is so 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 different. Yeah. And. And I, that's not necessarily the same with like a rock concert or a metal concert, right? You know, this is not part of the point of, of those other types, right? So I, I I almost feel like like in the metal scene, the album is an absolute fucking priority. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I don't feel that way when I listen to some jam band albums. Yeah, I feel like it's like a thing that they. I feel like it's you know, and and I maybe obligatory in some ways. Yeah, yeah, and 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 so it's not obligatory. I don't know, man. I'm this is I don't I don't want to talk about it anymore because <laughs> okay, I'm okay. just I just I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm just gonna, just saying negative shit. <laughs> um, All right, well let's turn oh, it back around then. Hold on. Oh, was that the? I forgot to plug the camera in. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <sighs> Yep, looks good. It's a blinking. Okay. A blinking. Um, 
but yeah all right so so this so, so this, this fucking list of music so this is a list of music this is <laughs> this is a list um this was i think i told you uh or i described this as at once extremely more atmospheric and extremely less atmospheric than the previous list the previous list was soundtracks in the 90s were pretty straight ahead pretty straightforward mm -hmm. all things considered a lot of arcade games a lot of relatively simple games and now we're coming into like way more intricate 3d games for example mm. but you could you could sort of generate more atmosphere at this point you couldn't really do that before in a lot of ways okay that makes sense so like there were there were games that i could have put on the, the other list but they were like pretty primitive like ps1 3d games n64 3d games infamous for looking like shit in a lot of ways mm -hmm. but still kind of being charming um so you get into this time period and like things really start opening up in that way. And so you get shit like what I put on here, which is like the Silent Hill games, which were fucking well known for being psychological horror nightmares mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of ways. The soundtrack uh, definitely being one of those ways. Uh, the first the first one of those games, which is on PS1, was nothing but... it's It sounded like outtakes of of Trent Reznor's like sampling sessions. It was just like, just like machine sounds and just like horrible grating and mm -hmm. like squishing and just disgusting machinery. Yeah. It was nothing but that. And then with, with two and three, which I have on this list, um, they, they started, they actually had some musical elements to them, but still very like atmospheric. Yeah, yeah. Th this this list overall felt felt much more uh, in in that it was a uh, conducive. That it felt much more linked, as if it would be linked to the gameplay itself, yeah. and not. Yeah. Whereas uh, the first list, there it, it there was more. There was like it was just a bunch of like inner. It was mostly it. The first just felt like a lot of kind of energetic, to like just a, like a lot of energetic songs, yeah, and or or songs in different styles and different moods. But it still there was less, less of this, like it it not so much with the Silent Hill ones, mm -hmm. but for me when I got to all the Half Life ones, totally those felt like oh, okay well this is this feels very very tied to the experience of the game yeah and and this and almost to the point to where it's it's almost not it's not in enjoyable is is too strong of a word but it's it seems like okay well this music is kind of like not functional apart from the experience of the game yeah i can i can i can acknowledge that it's good but I can tell that this is an element right of an experience whereas some of like especially the Silent Hill stuff that had a lot of value for for me at least just uh -huh. on its own interesting interesting so is that is that not how it plays for you I mean like I said like I said the last time and I'll reiterate this time like I have trouble thinking about this stuff objectively anymore because I've played all these games to death and I've listened to these soundtracks to death mm -hmm. and it's just just a big old mess. I just know what that is and that's just it's all in my mind now. I and see. I don't have to think about what it's actually doing a lot of times. Uh to the point where like I I felt like some of this stuff I was like rediscovering in a weird way. Okay. Um some of it I listen to all the time. Like the Half Life soundtrack, I listened to that constantly over the years. I've never stopped listening to that soundtrack. Half Life two specifically, uh, is what this is. And the uh, and the episodes, um, which were games about probably a third as long as the original game uh, that came out shortly thereafter, but oh, very okay. very similar soundtracks. Yeah, like and so here, I, oh, I I made I made notes and shit. So oh, cool. I can. So this is. I would I would try to listen. I'd listen to them, and I wasn't driving the whole fucking time. I was listening to this <laughs> like, like last week, so I was able to listen to things in blocks. Oh, okay, cool, cool. And so, what I said about Silent Hill Two 
was first of all that theme of Laura is such a cool groovy fucking track. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and but yeah, I, like a lot of the words I used for all the other stuff were, you know, not you know melodic and ambient, uh, angular, ambient, industrial. Mm-hmm. You know, da 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 those those kind of things. And the theme of Laura reprise was like nice melodic p- piano, blah blah blah. And I was like, there seems to be an interesting blend between catchy, melancholy melodies and unsettling, minimalist, industrial ambiance. Bingo. You nailed it. And so I was like, and then, however the fuck you would describe the theme of Laura. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, the two and three, and maybe going four, I can't remember because they made like four or five other ones. Uh, they always have these, like, poppy weird like lyrical so okay so i'll tell you a little bit a little bit about the themes of these games three in particular because we brought this point up three in particular stars like the character you play as is a teenage girl but the theme like the the title song for that game is like about like love and about like your body aching for someone and it's like who the fuck are you singing this for this Mm -hmm. is like a teenage girl that you're, this doesn't feel right at all. It's, uh-huh. it's a woman singing it, but it just feels super off. Are, are you talking about the? Letter? I did not include that song. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, okay. it has way creepier lyrics. Okay, and I was just like, I don't really like this very much. Okay. Anyway, so no, there, but there's the letter song as well, which. Fuck, dude, the lyrics in that song fuck me up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> dude. <laughs> oh. Um. Shit, man. <laughs> so, so just a little bit. Yeah, a, l- a little bit about the themes of these games, and the fir- so, the first game is like a guy who is, tr- like traveling through Virginia or some shit with his his daughter, his his adopted daughter, and they they crash their car, and he ends up in this town, Silent Hill, and it's all foggy. He can't get out. His daughter's missing. It turns out at the end, his daughter is like a sacrifice to a fucking demon, and crazy shit has happened. The the whole concept of the game is like you're going through this weird town and it's foggy and you can't really tell what's going on every once in a while a siren blares and the whole town goes dark and every every piece of architecture becomes like metal grating and just like rusty and bloody and shit it's it's super gross and fucked up and that's what these games do going forward they have Mm. this this conceit so two is like a different protagonist and he gets a letter from his dead wife to go to silent hill She's like, I'm waiting for you here in our special place and all this stuff. So he goes there to investigate. And what ends up happening over the course of the game is you you piece together that the town, the town shows the person who gets drawn to it something about themselves. Hmm. And so it's, it's showing him parts of his raging masculinity and his like, his, his horrible despair over his loss and his lust for this other person and all these things manifest themselves as characters and like he has to deal with them. Um, and that's, that's like widely known or widely regarded as like one of the best game stories. And this is two, two. Yeah. Okay. So you get to three and we've gone back to the girl from the first game, the, the daughter was sacrificed who was sacrificed quote unquote, but she's like, she's here again somehow, but you don't know that at first. And it doesn't really, it's like, it's a twist at the end, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so that's who you're playing as the whole game. So you're playing as this girl and you sort of realize that over time. Uh, but you're back in the town and you're you're confronting the death of your, you know, surrogate father and all this stuff. So there's shit like this. These are the themes that these games deal with, mm-hmm. right? Pretty heavy shit. Like, games didn't really fuck with this stuff a whole lot. And they kind of haven't too much since then, really? it's successfully okay. at least. Okay. So these, yeah, these games are stand out for being about some serious psychological and there are like religious overtones and undertones as well hmm. like there's like cults in all these games hmm. and yeah, a lot of sacrifices and whatnot That's... a lot of angels and demons uh hmm. some yeah it, it's sounds like sounds like i would enjoy playing these games it's kind of <laughs> kind of kind of kind of crazy that i never played a single one kind of what you're looking for maybe uh, they're not, um, they're not super easy to play. Like they're super nerve wracking. They're uh, they're they're horror games, but they're like right. way more tense. Hmm. And you can't you you get like weapons, but you're not really meant to fight back. I you're see. super weak. Hmm. 
So I see. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't really I didn't really fuck with horror games very much for whatever reason. So be- because I I don't know. Most I'll... people don't like being scared. <laughs> like that, I I enjoy being scared. Probably it, it's a privilege that I have, I guess, uh-huh. that I can do that cuz I'm not scared on a daily basis. I'm like, like worrying <laughs> about food and shit, you know, I I understand that. <laughs> So I like um, I like horror media quite a yeah, bit. Yeah, I'm worried about cheeseburgers attacking me. <laughs> uh, so that letter for Lost Days. So the first thing I wrote down about it was like big Portis head vibes. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so and this was just my first like before going and actually reading the lyrics, just sort of picking them up while listening and it was like the lyrics on this song are really getting to me hard <laughs> oh man <laughs> and and then i pivoted really quick because i didn't want to think about it too much <laughs> and i was like it's interesting to ponder <laughs> that uh that there that they that there's lyrics that are contemplating you know the like purpose of life in such a deep and meaningful way and it's in the context of a horror video game. And that really mm. struck me because this, you know, like the, like the, like the reason you're here is to feel joy is, is the, you know, is, is one of the big line is like the big, the big line that's said over and over again. I'm going to try and pull them up real quick. Mm. Um, and, you know, like a le- letter to my future self. And, yeah, and and all that kind of shit. Oh, oh man, I don't. I that that just that's just crazy to me. Um, yeah, that's and, cool. I didn't I didn't expect that. And so, yeah. Let me let me find it. Um, but yeah, like you know, letter to my future self. Am I still happy? I began. Have I grown up pretty? Is Daddy still a good man? Am I still friends with Colleen? Am I, you know, I'm sure that I'm still laughing, aren't I, aren't I? You know, mm-hmm. um, if you forgot how to smile, I have this to tell you. Remember it once in a while. You know, I pray for your happiness. Please don't lose hope. Like, I don't know. For me, that shit just, like, punched me in the fucking gut. Because, and it might just be where I'm at, in my life at this moment of just sort of, you know, what, because I felt very, 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 very lost and without a lot of direction 10 years ago. Right. And so, and, 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 and and I have a life right now that I couldn't have imagined then. Sure. And so that's just that aspect yeah, because you know, this is very specifically like ten years. Like, yes, yeah, it's and so hitting hitting on those notes, and then you know, we're put on this earth. We're not put on this. We weren't put on this earth to suffer and cry. We were made for being happy. So be happy for me, for you. And it's just it's so it's like a a plea, you know. Right, right. And and and, and then it being a plea from your past self, it just right. I don't. It gives me chills. No, just, man. It's, thinking it, about it, it's affecting, uh, for sure. You know, we were. Let me find the line. Um, we were put here on this earth, put here to feel joy. Like, that's we're put here to feel joy. It's supposed to be lyrics to a Beatles song, not a <laughs> fucking horror game. <laughs> so, so what is it? I, I read a little bit, and it's like this is a letter like lyrics adapted from a letter that's found in the game I think so I don't remember what context you find it in I think that's right but I can't remember for sure okay I so there's like is just this is this just like a cool song in in the game or is this or is this stuff very or is this very unique symbolism of these lyrics and things relative to the the game and its placement in the game. No, it definitely is that because the I don't know if it's 10 years exactly, but like I said the character you're playing in 3 is the little girl from 1 and she's oh, she's, fuck. she's grown up to be a teenager at this point and she's going through all this shit again. She's being she's being put through all this shit again and having to conf- confront the things that happened in her past. And I know you go to like you find your your apartment at some point and you find uh, 
things that your father had there. And I, I'm thinking that's probably where you found this at. Um, no, <laughs> I haven't. I haven't played this game in a while. I don't uh, wanna because, like I said, it's, it's like not easy to play these games. It's it's kind of taxing to play these games. Right, it's an experience. Yeah, you're you're like, well, I did that. Don't need to do that yeah. again. Like I, I know I loved that. Like that really affected me. But it's gonna be a long time before I do it again. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Fuck, definitely. Man. Yeah. Oof. But yeah. So those those particularly the lyrics in that song affected me greatly. I can I can totally see that. Yeah. So surprising, but yeah, I totally get it. Yeah. Uh, and so then Eve. Then then you get into the Eve stuff. And so okay. Ta- um, or did, was there anything about Silent Hill you wanted to riff on? No, that was good. Okay. So tell me about the gameplay of Eve, because I don't really, I'm not familiar. No, you, sh- you probably shouldn't be. <laughs> so, 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 so this is Eve Online. <laughs> Eve Online is is like an MMO, but it is widely. What is uh, MMO? Mul- multi- massively multiplayer online. Massively. It's not fucking... n- not massive. No. <laughs> It's a fucking bullshit marketing term. I don't know. This is massively <laughs> multiplayer. Man, there was a game that came out called Mag, and it was a military shooter. It was like a 64-player military shooter. But Mag stands for massive action game or some shit like that. <laughs> it, it was just the stupidest fucking acronym. You it's could, it's like, like, God damn you, George. Was John Romero with your BFG? <laughs> just this whole industry just fucking running with it. It's just rotting under the under the corpses of, of shitty of, acronyms. Of big fucking guns. <laughs> big acronym. Uh, so anyway. Uh, <laughs> you, get, you know, man, yeah. People talk a lot about Big Pharma, but we really need... <laughs> To start talking about big acronym. Big acronym. And don't even get me started on big backronym. <laughs> you want to go there? I, I, I like I like big backronyms. <laughs> I cannot lie. Um, so, so this game is like, it's, it's a it's a big multiplayer game. It's widely known as like a spreadsheet simulator, and what that basically means is that you can get way into like the economy of this game. Okay. The this game is so you you have a little ship that you have to work your way towards and buy and upgrade, mm-hmm. and you get your one ship and you you can make cargo runs across the galaxy, and trade with NPCs, non playable characters, or other players. And if your ship gets blown up, you fucking lost that ship. You gotta like find another one somehow. Okay. If you got if you're in a guild, maybe someone will hand you one and give you one or whatever. Otherwise, you gotta figure out how to buy one. Maybe you go back to the starter ship. I don't know. It's what I'm saying is it's rough. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you if you blow <laughs> up, rough. Yeah, if you get fucked over by space pirates, you lose your shit. Your shit's gone. Um, this game has like a community community run political system. I guess is the way to think about it. Okay. So anyone who plays this game can form groups like guilds and things like that. But there are also like councils over the di- different areas of the game, and you can be on a council, <laughs> right? And this is all very upsetting to me. <laughs> oh, it should be. So listen, there are multiple real life novels that have been written about this game, like chronicles of things that have happened in this game. Whoa. And they're fascinating. This is a game that multiple people over the years have always said, like, this is a game that I always want to be hearing about, but I never want to play. <laughs> and I totally am with that. Like, wow. I love hearing the crazy stories about, like, political intrigue and, like, blackmail and and all this wild shit that happens in real life. But, like, it was made to happen in this game, and it does. Like, there's... A, there's Wow. It's 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 economics and politics the game. Wow. It, it is nuts. Uh so all that to say the the actual gameplay of this if you're just playing by yourself is you get in your little ship and you just fly out into the fucking blackness in the stars. And you can go find rocks to mine uh and you can fight space pirates and that's kind of it. It's a very lonely experience if you want it to be. Hmm. Which when I played it for the little bit that I played it uh, was what I got out of it. I was like, man, this is like, because it's it's like it feels to scale. 
Like, uh, but as you, you cruise away from the station, you're like in blackness for a long time. Oh, wow. And so okay. you're listening to this soundtrack while you're doing that, or you get to a rock and you're like mining the one rock you found in the middle of nowhere uh-huh. and nothingness. And okay. then you go back into nothingness. Wow. The soundtrack is really great for that. Okay. Uh, but the soundtrack is like eight hours long of this kind of music, mm-hmm. like this sort of droning, repetitive synth sort of music right but with some like some cool little harmonization and some some melodic elements in there but if it, it feels like space to me yeah very much yeah i mean i all i knew about eve was is like oh that's a space game there's like ships and shit or something right and it's like multiplayer accurate and there's and there's some there's some bullshit with yeah. it that's that's that, that was, was what i knew <laughs> right that's what i knew um I was like, oh, I think I saw, I think I saw Josh play that game once. Probably, is, yeah, yeah. Is all I is all I knew. Yeah. Um, it's one of the wildest fucking games that that exists still. It's been going for like twenty years, and there there are literal like dynasties, like political dynasties in that game. Fuck. Like I'm sure there's nepotism running wild. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine. But like I said, literal chronicles that you can buy on like Amazon like bestsellers that chronicle shit that happened in this game that's so insane it's amazing uh so yeah uh, uh but yeah that that's what that soundtrack is it is like it's space the soundtrack and i i love it for that hmm. that yeah like they my thoughts were there's an otherworldly enticing ominous feeling to these tracks yeah there you go yeah Bang on. So, because there's, uh, yeah, I don't know, enticing and ominous. It's sort of held on to those two things because you do, I do remember sort of having this feeling of exp- of exploration, you know, of wandering in a sense, but almost like, hey. <laughs> like, well, you can wander, but like, wash the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, 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 you're wandering, but maybe you shouldn't be here. Like, you're wandering, you know, or... Something like there, 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 there wasn't, there was a sense of, uh, not malice, but like dread. Sure. Yeah. In, in, in the music. And so it's, it sounds like the music did a great job. Cool. Articulating that. Is there a specific, so, but, but in the first one, all that was lost, that one has like sort of like a big church hymn vibe to it. Yeah. And is it, does that have, does that song have a particular significance or role? I don't, or is nothing it I just, know of. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, this, this soundtrack is very long. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you just like, you can just pull the sound files out of the game and it's like 11 hours mm. of just fucking music. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't think it has any particular significance. Yeah, I could be wrong. Okay. Uh, but I doubt it. Got it. Um, but yeah, the, the way I think about this soundtrack is like, is sort of dread is a good way to say it. Like, mm-hmm. the, like just the, the, existential dread of outer space mm. generally mm-hmm. but mixed with like optimistic exploration right uh, huh. yeah 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 that that definitely comes across in the tracks and so something so a random thought that i had around this portion was you know because because here you start to hear like some of the synth wave synth wavy kind of stuff yeah in there and i and i and, and then you hear more of that in half-life a little bit yeah and and I was wondering what your thoughts were on sort of how this mu- how how the music of video games either sort of co-evolved with you know the modern synthwave scene or 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 influenced it or 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 predated it or yeah uh any of those it's a great question. Uh, and like last time we had Deus Ex as well, which had mm-hmm. a little bit of that going right. on. And that was like 2000. So that was one of the earlier examples. Uh, but um, it very, I'm, I'm tempted to say that it did influence it, um, but it definitely was influenced by, I guess it depends on the timing. I have to go check the timing. So there's a soundtrack that I would have included in the next uh, set that I'm not going to because it's it's all licensed music. But it was the soundtrack to a game called Hotline Miami. And 
uh, it's it's just a shitload of like how did, just the most it was it was the big breakout synthwave soundtrack. Okay. Uh, it's like a bunch of artists. Uh, I think I'd have to look it up actually. Um, but all all like known pub published artists, I guess is how you'd say that. They're on publishers. <laughs> they put out albums. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, they're they're known artists. Okay. Basically, uh, uh, so that came out in twenty. 11 or 2012 and that was like a huge explosion i see of of that music uh and that, that's a that's an amazing soundtrack but like i said all licensed stuff so i wouldn't include it in this um but i'm trying to think of what your drive came out the, i think it was around that same time around like 14 or something 12 like, or something here i can look it up because that had kavinsky on the soundtrack right and that was a huge flashpoint for the popularity of that stuff too. I see. Um, 2011. Okay. So same time, right around the same time. So, so the main character in hotline Miami is also just a dude wearing like a fucking jacket, like the dude in drive. Very, very similar. Okay. And the whole, the whole concept of that game is like, it's top down. So it looks, it doesn't look realistic or anything, but you're, you're going through a level, you're wearing like an animal mask and you're fucking murdering people. Uh, and it's meant to be super intense and raw and uh, sort of disgusting. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of it. Anyway, uh, but from that point to now, especially, uh, synthwave like fucking exploded. Right. Right. And then, but up until then, I think stuff like this and maybe even Half Life in particular probably influenced the trajectory of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then the people who are making the music for this are making you know, the music for Half-Life were pulling from the original source of Synthwave. Maybe. I don't know. The The Half-Life soundtrack in particular is weird because it's, it's it to me, well, I guess this is more a question for you really, is like it's meant to convey sort of what I described the game as in the Google Doc. Like a it's, it's a sci-fi like it's a near future sci-fi, almost like hard sci-fi in a way. Right, right. Story and uh, like a lot of urban, a lot of urban environments, a lot of uh, sure technology and things like that. It's meant to convey that feeling. I think it does that pretty well. Yeah, the um, I, I what I wrote about the Half Life stuff was overall, it feels like this music is the mo is is the mo is a. Uh, the sentence doesn't make sense. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, but like, like I said earlier, is that it's most connected to the gameplay as uh, from all the other music that you showed was, was my guess, my speculation, but I, I put it's connected to the suspense and motion of the gameplay. What was, was how this music felt. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it felt like there was a, a pace implied, of of the corner you're going around or of the lighting in the you know like a bright room versus a dark room versus this and yeah. that versus a confined space versus a spacious space it it sort of felt th that that was sort of how the music sort of hit me i think that's totally intentional okay yeah. and, and and it might it might just be that i was re because half life is is a first person shooter in a sense right yeah. right and and i've played a lot of first person shooters i haven't played half life but i'm so I might have just been familiar with that style of gameplay. Right. So that might be why I it read that way to me. Uh, but but yeah, like I don't know, like like synthwave is, and then I also like was like, all right, you know, let's see. I liked the baseline and CP violation <laughs> guard down. I like this track. I don't know. And then like the like the Vortal combat and the right the Einklein what was it Einkleiner elevator music yeah yeah I was like ha 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 yeah 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 because yeah. um, there's a doctor in the game named Kleiner Doctor oh Kleiner. man that's like so, another layer there you go yeah, yeah. another layer um but yeah but it's just it's, it's I, and I guess like the whole synthwave thing is interesting because it seems and I don't really know because I'm just I just don't know spitballing here. 
it seems like it was a genre that almost just completely skipped like 15 years or something or like 10 years of existence or 15 years of existence. Kind of. You know, it's like, oh, okay, well, here's like, like the, the elements for it were present in the 80s and then no one fucked. It seems like no one fucked with that vibe for like 15 years. Right. And then, and then that vibe became the fucking vibe. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and that's that's just it's like what an interesting happening. You know? It's really weird. Yeah, like because because there's the whole thing of like trends come back around, right? Mm-hmm. The the '70s came back in the '90s, so on and so forth, whatever. Right. Uh, luckily, jinkos have not come back. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, they are back, but they haven't come back. I, I would love to to sort of be able to open like this closet door and have just like four <laughs> sets of fucking jinkos. Oh God. Uh, of four sets was all that could fit in That's the closet. All that could fit in the sure. entire closet. Exactly. Like not even just on the door, like no. just the entire closet. Um, but uh, since I, yeah, actually, all this is this is all made of jinko. <laughs> I can. <laughs> it's all prime grade jinko hide. You see, you see this right here? You see this right here? This is this is 1997 jinko. Oh, vintage. Good. It was a good year. Um, but but synthwave synthwave is a weird one because like, it almost feels like this resurgence that happened like a decade or so ago, whatever it was, is just, is almost solely based on a like manufactured nostalgia. Hmm. Because there were things actually in the 80s that kind of sounded similar. And there were things like Knight Rider, you know, the car had the fucking lights and there's some neon and shit here and there. Right. But it's taken to such an extreme now. That was yeah. never the case for real. And that that that's yes. And that's the thing that makes it different than whenever, you know, people are, you know, sampling soul beats from the seventies. Uh or people are being really inspired by early seventies or late sixties R and B as far as drum sounds or as far as vibe and things like that. Mm. Because that stuff was actually there yeah in the form that they're trying to use today yeah you're sampling it it actually was recorded and happened right but with synthwave like what it's so weird it's not it wasn't really there yeah like th- there are examples of like you could probably listen to like new order and shit like that mm-hmm. and and there were synths like that stuff did exist in some way, but not to the extent it, it's 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 very romanticized. It's very exaggerated. Right, 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 right. right. These days, uh, may, like maybe to its detriment. I don't, I don't really know, but I I like it a lot. It, it it's hard not to like it. <laughs> it. It's it's really cool. It's really it's really uh um like intoxicating in a weird way. Uh. Not not that it not that it makes me feel cool necessarily. I guess it kind of does, honestly. But <laughs> it's just a it's just a cool vibe. It, it yeah it it really is. I um. It's gonna it's gonna be the annoying music of our generation. It's gonna be the music. <laughs> it's gonna be to our kids what what yacht rock is to us. Oh man, well someone's got to do it, I guess. Yeah. And and I mean I have a I have a big soft spot for for all the yacht rock stuff. Like what? Give me like an example of yacht like rock. Like Steely Dan, okay. Eagles. Okay. You know. Okay. Like easy, like easy listening rock and roll. Okay. Like like you take like, you know, Led Zeppelin is not yacht rock mm-hmm. because it's because Led Zeppelin is is not easy going. It's too intense. Right. 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 But you know, like, oh well this is kind of sophisticated. These melodies are nice. It's got good harmonies. It's got good groove. You know, whatever, but it's easy to listen to. Sure. That's that's the vibe of it. Okay. You know? So so a lot of Eagle stuff, you okay. know, Steely Dan, uh, you know, that all that kind of shit. Like Doobie Brothers and uh Moody Blues and all that shit. Gotcha. So, man, is it weird to you that the, the those greatest hits Eagle albums are still like the best selling albums of all time? You know, does it mean anything anymore? I guess is my real question there. Man, because they are, but the best selling albums by like a lot. 
Those songs are some of the best songs ever written. They are some fantastic by songs. By like a lot. <laughs> well, uh, okay. I mean, granted. I, just, I will not argue with that. It's, it just seems so weird. If you, there's a, I, I wonder if it's still on Netflix, but there's a really great documentary about the Eagles on Netflix. It's, it's fascinating. So hi, okay. hi, highly recommend it. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Go, go watch that. We'll talk about that shit. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be that'll be a fun one but uh but it uh like it's it's funny because i've seen i've seen people like online mostly probably younger than me probably substantially younger than me but like have zero idea of who the eagles are or what those albums are and that's what that is what's they're sort of in this weird spot because they're when we were kids here here's like a good example now, when people talk about the '70s and rock music, they you're gonna be able to have that conversation for about 30 seconds before someone mentions Led Zeppelin. Sure, it is understood now that Led Zeppelin is big dog top of the top of the pile, right? In 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 a lot of ways. That's not how it was when we were in high school. That was not the that was like it was not like Led Zeppelin was one, uh-huh. but not like the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I got you. It was not. It was not understood that like mm. like ever like we were like yeah we all know Stairway to Heaven, but it was like Led Zeppelin wasn't on wasn't in the didn't have the 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 level of uh, sort of untouchable mystique that they do now. You know why? Because they hadn't been in car commercials yet. Or maybe because they hadn't been sued yet, <laughs> or maybe because they hadn't had their reunion yet. Or did they have a reunion? They did. They with, with, uh, with John Jason, Bonham's son. They did. Okay. okay. They did. And wow, I forgot about that. <clears throat> or it was before they put out all that live material, maybe, and people fucking you know, because that was a big deal when they put that stuff out. Anyway, anyway, like I'm not, I'm not trying to say like people didn't know Led Zeppelin was good until just now, but but. Uh, right. Yeah, and in in the what I'm what I'm trying to get at is that the the albums, the perception of a band's influence in the in the decade in which they were formed changes over time. Oh yes, agreed. And so, and I think that the influence that Led Zeppelin had was less clear to us in the 90s. And and it became more clear as the decades went on. And but you know, and so so then there's also sort of the thing of where there might be a band that's been incredibly influential, but they weren't necessarily selling a lot of albums, they weren't necessarily that popular then. Mm-hmm. You know, we sort of talked about that last last when we we're talking about, you know, last week when I was talking about Rick Beato and shit like that and like you're like, oh, 1991, that must have been such an incredible year. Look at all these albums that came out. And it's like none of these albums that are these influential albums were charting. Like the number one song was Brian Adams. Right. It wasn't, you know, um, insert Soundgarden song name. <laughs> right. The um, Limo Wreck. The one everyone knows. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> uh and so the, I think the Eagles are in a weird spot because they were really selling that many records and they are, they are sort of really, they haven't been forgotten, you know, like they're, they're sort of in a weird area. I feel like they haven't been forgotten by a certain generation of people, mm-hmm. but then a certain generation of people only knows them because the fucking dude hates them. You know what I mean? <sighs> That's incredible. Be- because no one else. Yeah, I guess like, so. I think people just don't know the fucking Eagles. Yeah, because there is nothing really, there's nothing really underground about them. There's nothing punk rock about them. There's nothing edgy about them. There's nothing, you know. And you don't really hear them anymore these these days, I feel like. They just don't come up. Uh, they come up for me, but do they? Okay, I, I feel like no one talks about, no one's talking about the Eagles. What's going on? <laughs> what's no one, the deal? Why is no one talking about the Eagles? Um, These kids today, they don't know good music. No one's <laughs> talking about the Eagles. But it, but it's like it's, I mean the the the, the sales charts are like the the that first collection 
the earlier songs, mm-hmm. like 19 whatever to, to 75, I think it is, is number one. And then it's like Thriller, I think. That sounds right. Is number two. And then The Eagles, <laughs> fucking part two, <laughs> is the third best selling. And then it's like Garth Brooks and whatever the fuck I, else. I think it just means that they just made this. They just made shitty albums. And <laughs> Only their collections <laughs> ever charted. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I, I, remember, I remember being at my mom's house. This was like 15 years ago or some shit like that. <laughs> And um, she had like a, uh, you know, the Eagles farewell tour yeah. part one yeah. DVD. And 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 she had it playing while I was like doing something else. And that was, it was like, by the time it got to, you know, minute 90. And I was like, God damn it, I know this song too. <laughs> right. What the fuck? Because... It was all because they, they were playing Eagle songs. They were playing Glenn Fry songs. They were playing Don Henley songs. They were playing Joe Wal- the, P- Joe Walsh songs. All on all on the same DVD. So yeah, it, I mean, it doesn't seem that crazy to me because that 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 music scratches a very particular itch. Uh, I mean, I. We're fucking way off topic here at this point, but like a little bit. I I feel like uh, I feel like to me I I identified with it in a weird way, in like the ninety in the mid nineties because I was watching shit like Dazed and Confused, mm. and I was like, that's cool, man. Well, and you you were you were like kind of always into Joe Walsh, weren't you? Why am I thinking that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why <laughs> do you associate me heavily with Joe Walsh? <laughs> I kind of always have it in the back of my head. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's 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 like that's some Robert shit. I'm trying to think of what the, what could possibly have led you to that conclusion. I mean, weren't you on Drew Carey once or twice? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> was Joe Walsh on Drew Carey shows? He <laughs> he's like in the oh, he's like shit. in the set, the background, like playing guitar for some fucking really? reason. Yeah. Whoa. I don't know. Like maybe he's like Mimi's brother or something. I don't. Okay. Okay. Know. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like C- Craig Ferguson's weird, like surrogate American f- brother or whatever. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. No, I. I think. Uh, I, don't I don't know. know. Like maybe it's because he's kind of the oddball of the group, but. <laughs> oh, okay. I can identify <laughs> with that. But, but but really good at guitar. I can identify with that. Yeah. So, Kindred spirits in a weird way, but not yeah. like politically or anything. Oh, does he say crazy shit? I think he's kind of a shitbag. I don't, oh, I don't okay. know for sure. I, I mean, Don Henley's kind of a shitbag. Okay, well. Well, you know, I mean, we, well, we talked about... <laughs> for the same reasons, though? Like, I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, okay. But we talked about the, 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 like, big boomer energy of the Get Over It song. Right, right, so, right. Yes. But... but well, no, it's, it's weird when you say... Because when you say, like, Joe Walsh, my mind, for, for whatever reason, also goes to Ted Nugent. Oh. Who, like... I I always really loved like Stranglehold, like I learned that whole song at some point. I I mean it, it's one of the two good ones he wrote. What, what's the other one? I guess Cat Scratch Fever. Okay, as long as you don't say fucking Wango Tango, we're good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're good here. Uh, um, yeah, fuck Ted Nugent. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. Anyway, um, and, and let me let, let me clarify that real quick. Like when I say fuck Ted Nugent, I don't just mean because of his politics. Um, Ted Nugent pissed me off. A long, long, Personally. long, long, long time ago because he talked shit on Dimebag. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. And so it was Wow. Like, was this before or after they covered Cash Crash Fever? That was why. Oh. Wow. That was a good cover. It was. It fucking was. Wow. <laughs> what a dig. Yeah, because up to that point, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen Ted Nugent. Like, like you know, my dad had some Ted Nugent LPs, you know, Double Gonzo Live and right. and shit like that. And Tommy Aldridge plays with Ted Nugent. And, I mean, there was that time I saw Ted Nugent open for Kiss in 97. He said some weird stuff about Mexicans, and that was weird <laughs> and awkward. But, but you know, man, whatever. And then uh, then they put out that cover of Cat Scratch Fever. And then they, like, after Dimebag like, died or something, someone was like, so, Ted Nugent, what do you think about Dimebag? I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, well, you know, <clears throat> they did that shitty cover of my song, right? Like, he's. He had like that kind of fucking energy about it. It was man, fuck it's, it's how it read to me. I right, like, fuck this guy. I don't know. I can see that. Anyway. He's he's just, he's just a fucking provocateur. Yeah, you know he's you know. Yeah. I mean, cool man, you're fucking good at the guitar. Like so fucking what? Like <laughs> I mean, 
True. You've been a millionaire for a long fucking time because you were really you got in early on that whole being really good at guitar thing. Okay, good for you, yeah. man. You, but, can, you can shoot a bow relatively straight, I guess. Well, God damn it, man. If I've been a millionaire for 40 years and I've been working on a fuck on shooting bow for 40 <laughs> years, I'd be pretty fucking good at it, too. <laughs> what do you get to do? What's your job? Well, every once in a while I go and play guitar and, uh, you know, but when I'm, you know, when I when I'm not doing that, I like to I like to I like to shoot guns and bows. And Guess I'm what? Not... I'm pretty good at shooting guns and bows by now. Because I don't the... have to play my guitar that much. <laughs> but then when I'm not doing that, I guessed at conservative rallies. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm really good at that now. I'm real good at shit posting as a lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, Half Life. Yeah, Half Life. Um, yeah. From Ted Nugent to Half Life, the obvious thread. Anyway, yeah, that. <sighs> That that <laughs> Half Life Half Life Two is like widely regarded as one of the best games of all time. Okay, just straight up, uh, and I I agree with that. It'd probably be like one of my top three. Uh, I've played it fucking fifty times probably over my lifetime. What would, what would be the other two? In my top three, unranked, uh, probably Final Fantasy Seven's up there. Um, and uh, yeah, I just think about the third one. Those two for sure though. But what what about your top four? And you can leave the fourth unnamed. Oh, so we do the fourth name. Okay, see, that's clever. That's, that's I appreciate that. Uh, oh, man. So I didn't come prepared for this. Let's, let's, uh, let's say Toe Jam and Earl. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's, 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 in, it's in the top five somewhere. <laughs> Oh man, there's a whole man. People love that game. It's fucking awesome, dude. Um, I, I I played that game. I don't know how many times with my grandmother. And wait, when you say with, it's two. It's a two player game. So you're you're like, here's your controller, grandma. I mean, she was like, here's your controller, motherfucker. <laughs> like we we played that so so much that at a certain point she would just call like we just call and talk on the weekends or some shit. And she'd be like, "Yeah, I like, fell asleep last night playing. I beat the game and just and, and on my own. And your grandpa found me asleep on the couch with the controller in my hand. Wow, numerous times. Are these the same grandparents that uh, you listen to that fucking weird music with? Weird music, but, <laughs> but yes, yeah. Well, that, that it, the... <laughs> <laughs> it's relatively weird in the context of everything else on that playlist. It stuck out. Yeah." Yeah, it was weird true. relative to that. Um, Extremely true. What was the name of that artist? Floyd again? Kramer. Floyd Kramer. There yeah, yeah, yeah. Is. yeah. So Nashville pianist. Uh, yes. Yeah. Same ones. Wow. What rad fucking grandparents. Dude, she's cool as fuck. Uh, wow. So, okay, okay. So, so and and so Final Fantasy VII is that the one that we talked about last week? Okay. Yep. Okay. Rad. So, so Half Life is an important game. Yeah, important game, very good game. Yep. Um. All right, I guess we can move on. So, this is the section. Now that we are into the, the final two games, these are it's three. These are Persona Three and Persona nope. Four. Nope. Oh, Chaos. Cha- oh, Chaos Theory. So this is Splinter Cell. What's Splinter Cell? I forgot these were in there actually. That top. Clancy. Tom Clancy. Okay. Matter of fact, yeah. <laughs> Tom Clancy. Tom Man. Clancy. Tom Clancy. Tom Clancy. So a, a weird thing has happened with Tom Clancy because he's, I think he died like 10 years ago, <laughs> something like that. Uh, that's not the weird thing that happened. But uh, so in. <laughs> we thought he was going to live forever. <laughs> well, he knew he knows about so much military technology and in exhausting <laughs> detail that you might have thought that. Anyway, we thought the military was going to cease functioning without <laughs> someone knowing all those things. <laughs> without someone to document all these things in like rather dry uh, novels. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> this will make a great video game. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think in like 2001, Splinter Cell One came out. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. Okay. And I guess like loosely based on a novel that he wrote. I don't know for sure. Like my dad grew up, my, my dad, I grew up around my dad's love of these novels. Interesting. Of the Tom Clancy novels. Okay. Uh, 
and I was always like intrigued by them from afar because they were huge. Oh, and they had like a picture okay. of a submarine on the front. And I was sure. like, that's fucking cool, right? Sure. That's probably great. And I like never. A, like an M16 on the mount, you know? Or, yeah, or like a, an ICBM or something like that. Like the like the old PCs? Like the IBMs? Yeah, yeah. An IPCBM. <laughs> uh, uh, Patriot Games. Anyway, uh, yeah, so like Tom Clancy like started licensing. I don't know how it worked at first. He started putting his names on these games because they were adapted from his works. Because he had a good entertainment lawyer. Because he had a good entertainment lawyer. So at, at a certain point, like, I think after he passed away, the company who made all of his games, Ubisoft, like, ha- they own the rights to his name now. Right. So they just throw his name on all kinds of shit these days. On, like, whether or not it really pertains to anything he ever wrote or not, it, it's really yeah. weird. <laughs> there is a, uh, there's a Bob Ross documentary on Netflix that, that kind of talks about this. Oh, really? Yeah, it's pretty, mm. it's pretty fascinating. I could see that. So insidious. It's, it's really terrible that, that particular documentary, but, but yeah, but that is a, you, that is a weird thing that can happen where someone's, even someone's likeness yeah. can get trademarked and then not be owned by them. You know, that's the kind of shit they do to I think like college foot college football players and shit like that. Well the mm-hmm. uh I think that law just passed where college football players have to have a lot more control over that sort of thing. Oh, awesome. Yeah. They they can actually get endorsements now. Cool. Cause I know that was a thing for a while. Like it was a thing for a while, like, okay, well if I'm a football player and I like like I can't sell a shirt with my own face on it. Yeah. Shit I, like that. I think they can now. They just need to make a deal of it. Maybe with the car, it's, it's nebulous. I get this. this yeah, point. yeah, we're whatever. We're we're out of our depth. But there. yeah, so Tom, so Tom Clancy's <sighs> name, even though he's not, these aren't these aren't video games that are based on his, based on his novels anymore, or he has he's been dead. But that name, they own the rights to use that name. Yeah, and, and, and they and, throw it on whatever. And actually, he it, he might have sold it to them the rights to it before he died i'm not positive that could be it, that's possible yeah 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 i mean it, it, if not his fucking kids are like yeah take it yeah exactly but anyway at the, in the beginning here with the splinter cell games specifically they were more like these are stealth games these are like mm. very slow you're going through like a very political story of like intrigue and espionage and all this shit and i love shit like that in in certain in certain ways nice uh, like the Deus Ex game also was very heavy. Right, shit. right, 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 right. Uh, but yeah, like being like spy shit is is cool. Okay. Like whatever. Like I, no reservations about that. That you know. So nice. Um, this is the third game in the series. Uh, but the soundtrack is done by Amon Tobin. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. I've heard that name. He's he's been going for like 25, 30 years as like an electronic musician. Okay. Uh, he I don't know where he's from or or anything, but. I, I know I've got a shitload of his albums on my on my Spotify, and they're all pretty great. Um, but this soundtrack, this soundtrack in particular, I like a lot, uh, and it really, to me, the whole thing really gets across that vibe. I uh, when I got to these, I the thought I had was I was like, these are these tracks are my faves so far. Cool. Um, but yeah, like Big Chemical Brothers vibe. Hmm. What yeah. up? What I wrote about the lighthouse, the first track was, you know, like cool bass line and effect. And then I was like, it's really cool that the whole track was built off of that. Yeah. You know, like, cause it starts off with whatever, whatever the bass line was, but that's the one that's like, do, 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 That sounds, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds I think right. that's a great line. And, um, yes. And like, it's so fucking strong. Right. And it's the kind of thing that feels like it should just be an element. But no, they build the whole song off of that. Like, that's not an element. That's the theme, motherfucker. Right. And I thought that was really interesting. I yeah, thought they, that was... They iterate ideas over it, and they come in, he goes in and out, and... Right. Yeah, it's good, cool as hell. Yeah, um, it's interesting. Yeah, the, these tracks, speak, to me, speak to the atmosphere of the game very well. Okay. Not knowing what kind of game it was, like this kind of changes how I mm. sort of perceive these. Oh, okay. 
it is interesting too because the nature like the way that they're sampling the drums and whatnot like they're that's sort of in the vein of you know sa sampling 70s music and whatnot and so it almost is hearkening back to like mm. spy movies of the 70s yeah in a sense like it's it's almost like pulling from that vibe almost subconsciously because you're hearing drum sounds you would have heard that's a good point during that time period you know like yeah that's interesting because I can, now that you say that, I can kind of, I get that. Yeah, because a lot of those drum samples are, are, are those are old. Th those, those feel like the kind of samples that you hear in, in like Chemical Brothers and stuff, where it's just like, oh, here's the amen break, like split up and flipped inside out and turned thirty ways sideways. Right. But it's still just the amen break. Right, right, right. So that's interesting. That's like another layer of, of it. And so something else about this, I. I'm going to talk about this. I'm, I am 90% sure that this game does this, but I'm not absolutely positive. And something that's going to come up in, in future episodes of this, um, something that games are able to do. So with the Deus Ex soundtrack, there were, there were tracks called like, uh, I don't know, fucking UNATCO is the one I can think of. It was just like your headquarters, the agency you worked for. It was like UNATCO dash uh conversation mm -hmm. or unatco dash combat or ambience mm -hmm. or whatever but they were all unatco dash those things and so what was happening there is in the context of what was going on in the game whether you were like the game state basically whether you were in a conversation with somebody or whether you were just walking around looking at shit exploring or whether you were fighting or whether you died all these things the music would dynamically mix in and out those different tracks. Uh, and so it would okay. it would feel pretty natural weaving from one to the other. Oh, I see. And like a crossfade kind of thing, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. And and it would do that dynamically based on what was happening in the game. And I think this game does similar with like these tracks and silence a lot of the times. Mm. Uh, and maybe maybe other ambient music that isn't on the actual soundtrack. I hear what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> but it does use silence very effectively. Like, and so in a stealth game, that's something you would want. You know? Sure. You want like downtime, you want slow, you want you know, deliberate, all this stuff. Uh, and then when shit picks up or when you hit like a moment that you need to like, they want to accentuate it, they pipe in some of this. Okay. So it's not, I don't think it's going at all times. I, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, it feels... I mean, just the tone of 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 the of the songs you put on there. That it feels like the it feels like the montage section of the spy movie. It feels like the right. you know, like you're gonna see him sneaking through a great many areas during this this little musical motif. Yeah, exactly. You know, it really reminded me of. Okay, so there is a. Uh, <clears throat> I think it is. So the last, the last two Showa era Godzilla movies, okay, um, they kind of blur together, there for me because one is, you know, Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla, mm -hmm. and then the other, the next one is the Terror of Mecha Godzilla. <clears throat> so gotcha. Mecha Godzilla is the main protagonist, and I think it's the first one. I think it's just Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. But there's a whole sort of like spy subplot, and that was always that was a, that's an interesting thing that happens with the Godzilla movies, even over the other decades, and even so. Okay, so the Showa era is the is the it's there's the Showa era, and then the Heisei era era, and then the Millennium era. Now the Showa era is referring to the that was the name. Whenever there's a new emperor of Japan it's given a name. Yep. And so there was a new emperor of Japan I guess made it in the, in the eighties, I believe. And so the, the, the era changed. And so that Showa is the, are the films made yep. before that. And then Heisei are the ones made after that. Yep. In Japan, when a new emperor takes power and they, they like declare a new era, it's like a big fucking deal. R right. Yeah, so right. one, that just happened like a few years ago. With okay, the new emperor, and it was a big fucking deal. Gotcha. So gotcha, and then, and then they made an arbitrary line because there was a change around two thousand, and that was the Millennium series. Uh, okay, Millennium. Okay. Yeah, Millennium's 
era. Gotcha. But anyway, but yeah, so the last two of the Showa era, and like when most people think of Godzilla movies, they think of the Showa era. That's mm. the because we just didn't in America see much of the Heisei series. They didn't get many. Uh, m- n- very few of those films were actually released here, aside from the first one in 1984. Anyway. But but some of the, but some of the vibe of the music here reminds me mm. of the, the 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 one Godzilla movie that had a spy subplot. <laughs> I can I can see but, that weirdly oh, enough. Oh right, that's what I was saying. But yeah, it's very common for sort of those those movies to take on sort of different tones to try to borrow from other other genres that are popular, mm. and then sort of we try to weave that tone around big monster fights. Okay. In some way. There's some wacky ones that happened in the fucking eighties and nineties during the Heisei area era. Because oh, it's 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 like it's in, is this Indiana Jones? <laughs> Wait a minute. Is this Back to the Future and Terminator 2? Oh Jesus Christ. At the same time? <laughs> oh no. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> For real. <laughs> uh, but uh but yeah, 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 yeah. So the, the, I, I, I like those. Those were cool. Those were rad. That, that soundtrack is only like ten tracks long, and it's all very good. So if you like okay. that, check out the rest of it. All right. So Persona three and four. Yes. Um, what kind of fucking games are these? Because this music <laughs> is weird. Yeah, it I is. like it a lot, but it's cool. Fucking weird. Good, good. Uh, so this was the one I was most curious about, actually, on here. Um, to as to what you would think about it. I wrote more about this than I think I did about anything else. <laughs> cool. All right. So these are Japanese RPGs. Um, they all take place in a like town, which you can usually like explore. And you're a high school student, and there's a mystery that unfolds. Okay. And uh, that's that's pretty much the gist of all of those games, I think. Although you. You were a high school student in three, four, and five. They made two in the '90s, but you were adults. You played as adults, and I think because three became so popular in the West, they just kept that high school thing going. Okay. So now these days, because five just came out in 2016, like 10 years after this one came out, almost after three came out, uh, and it was kind of weird then, and it's even weirder these days, where you've got like these fucking fifty some odd, sixty year old Japanese dudes writing like high school student stories and games. Oh, okay. It's staying pretty fucking weird. Um, like, like, it, it was it was weird then. Let's like I like this game a lot. I like uh-huh. it was weird then. Okay. Um. Anyway, so you're, so you're so what's the style of the gameplay? Uh, it's it's turn based like battles and shit like that oh okay so there's a kind of two parts to the game and oh boy this is gonna be complicated isn't it uh <laughs> so there's there's two parts to the game there's like your daily life and then there's your combat so okay every, every in in three every night at midnight you go into like this tower this ever-growing tower and you fight your way through it and that's that's part of the game the daily life part is you go around school you go to school every day you go to your classes you meet people, you become friends with them, and as you level up your friendships with people, or you date people, or you whatever, uh, you get to know people, that bond with that person levels up your combat over here. Interesting. So there's a really cool synergy that happens there. Interesting. Uh, and you and you find things like items and shit in the dungeons that you can use in the daily life. And so it goes back. Oh, okay. It's actually a really, it's a really compelling system there. Mm-hmm. And all the games, I think, pretty much have that same sort of thing. Um. But so you go about your daily life and you go through the story and there's a mystery that happens and you, you solve it. And at the end, at the end of all these fucking games, you end up fighting God, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. If you could have stopped time there for a moment and you said at the end of all these games and boop and like given me a multiple choice <laughs> on what you were fixing to say. Fighting God would not, I, I would not have, I would, no, 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 no. Yep, based on everything I just said up to that point. Yeah, like, in all these have... games, you figure out that you really are the blah, or you figure out that it's your duh, no, or you're, you just, you're, you just kill God. You're your time. own dad or some weird, you know. No, nothing that, nothing that wild. You just kill God. You just kill God. Every time. God is usually portrayed as a sort of, uh, not really the Christian God, maybe, kind of, just sort of a nebulous multi-denominational god i guess <laughs> i've never 
whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's unclear. But... My God, is not non. I, I don't go to a non-denominational church. <laughs> I go to, all I go to multi-denominational. Uh, um, give but... me all of the denominations. <laughs> But uh, I'm the denominator. It, it's always, per- <laughs> but it's it's always portrayed as like vengeful and like pff, everything's fucked anyway. Like what can you do? And then you kill God, and he's like, oh shit, I'm dying. Anyway, <laughs> oh shit, I'm dying. Yeah, basically. Wow. So it's 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 wild. Um. So anyway, okay. that's that's the overview of these games. So all right. <laughs> like like in three, the whole the whole conceit is like. In the city, like there were experiments going on, and now every night at midnight, time stops for an hour, and it's the midnight hour, and everyone turns into coffins for some reason, except the people who don't, and they're attacked by these monsters called shadows, and some of the people can fight back, and they fight back by summoning their inner self, their persona. It's very, it's very oh, Jungian that way. Okay. It's, it's it's all about all these games are about that. This persona, right? But the way you summon your persona is you take this gun-shaped thing and you shoot yourself in the head with it. Wow. You don't actually shoot a bullet out, but it's yeah. like it's like a will yeah. thing, I guess. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And you summon your thing like that. So the, wow. the entire game, every one of these battles is each character shooting themselves in the head. Wow. Yeah, so. How fucking... <laughs> that's just banana sandwiches. So that was three. Uh... <laughs> And, okay. And uh, in four, you're in a small country town. So that was like a big, big city sort of thing. In four, you're in a small rural town, and uh, there's a murder that happens. But every night at midnight, when it's raining, the TVs go weird, and you can watch a midnight channel, and the next person to die appears on that channel. Okay. And as you figure out who it is, you rescue them, and they become part of your crew. And you go on and go on and go on with that, and you go into the TV this time to do the to do the battles. Oh, okay. Not a tower. No, there's no tower. You just go into the TV world, and it's you kill God in the end. And naturally, <laughs> again, wh- those motherfuckers keep showing up. <laughs> really persistent. This gotta this kill fella. your ass again. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, God looking motherfucker, get over here. <laughs> Get over here, God. So anyway, that's that's a super high level gist there. But all right, yeah. Well, that completely uh, makes sense. Why the music sounds the way that it does? <laughs> no, not at all. No, um, not even close. No. So when when did these games come out? Uh, three was two thousand six, and then four was very soon after in two thousand eight. Okay. So the thing that was really striking to me about these. And so it took me a while to try to wrap my head around it. But like, Mm -hmm. so the first one, like burn my dread. I was like, well, this is different. Yep. This, this, this plays over the intro credit scene or not credits, but like the intro cut scene sort of. And. And what I wrote was, it's interesting how something can use rock elements, rock in quotes, yeah, rock yeah, yeah. elements, but definitely not be rock. Definitely not. And and that that was like my first read on the first track. And that valid is something that seemed that 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 kind of whatever the kernel of that idea is seemed to be a theme throughout all of the rest of the music. For both of these games. Yeah. And, you know, so. Well, I can't, I can't wait till we get to five then in, in part four of this. Great. And so, and again, these are, these are not really fleshed out thoughts here, but, but I'm going to go ahead and throw this out here anyway. So it's, and this was whenever, uh, this is in regards to the, when the moon's reaching out song. Okay. Which is, let me refresh. Yeah. It's, It's like pop lyrics and shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what's so crazy <laughs> about that is that it's 
it's weird how the pop tracks feel like they're getting away with something. <laughs> okay. Like, like it's a pop song, mm-hmm. but it has all these jazz influence and it's, but it somehow seems more seamless than when you hear the same thing in American pop music. Sure. And, and then I, and again, I'm just, I, was, I haven't had, I don't have these ideas totally fleshed out, mm-hmm. but it's like, it has to be a result of the sound elements being used in this context not tracking as dated while they would have tracked as that if you put in contemporary pop music of, if put into contemporary pop music of the time, but there are other elements that are definitely of the time. So it's, so it's like, that's why I asked when this came out because you have Mm -hmm. sound elements in there, you know, either just actual sounds being used or maybe the orchestra, maybe the voicings of the chords, maybe the melodies and whatnot. That's like, Oh, well this sounds like, mid 1990s dance pop okay yeah but then you have other sound elements that are most definitely not that right and it creates this weird brain scramble thing <laughs> of of the of it of of how of, of it's like okay well this this isn't just pop music and but if you would have taken the same song and just given it this the the sort of used the sonic palette that was used in in American pop music of whatever time. Yeah. It would be like, oh, well, that's that, whatever. It's pop music. And it would be easily, you'd, you could easily put it in the box. But ju- right. it seems like with these songs, just by mixing up uh, the, the elements used and the sonic textures and whatnot, and, and then being sort of scrambled over a few eras, because there's things in there that are elements. It's like, yeah, that's definitely like a 2006 element. But there's other things where it's like that's a fucking 1995 element, and 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 putting those together, it it's it's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> it it is. It's it's kind of unclassifiable in a weird way. Yeah, and 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 that's yeah. Like I don't. I'm I'm trying to think of a good of like a good analogy for it, but it's you know it's like okay well we were talking about slipknot and black metal earlier uh-huh. so it's like if in the middle of fucking left behind or or you know like a song on iowa it just flipped into and you had you know something that sounded like early dark throne you know like like some like a band playing into a jukebox <laughs> That, you know, <laughs> right. like you had like a, whole, you know, or like that, or that was like, yeah, Mick, you know, Mick was like, no, that's what my guitar tone is, you know, Aah! you know, mm-hmm. and that was just thrown in with all the other shit. That's like just primo 2001 metal, you know, metal drums, metal sounds and everything like that. And then you just have like some idiosyncratic element thrown in there. Yeah. And it to- it totally like scrambles up how you're how you're supposed to categorize the music. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I I, I absolutely agree with that that sentiment. And that was pretty much for all of <laughs> all of the persona music. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's it's fucking weird. It's uh it's it's jazzy, but it's poppy, but it's like. It's hip hop in a weird way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's the one song that's like straight like a reggae rap song or something. Um, yeah, there's a couple of them. Well, there's at least definitely the one. The the one with the dude just like rapping most of the time is like mm-hmm. the battle themes. You hear that constantly. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay, that's that's it's great though. I love it. Um, but yeah, it, a lot of it, like a lot of the pop elements, reminded me of a. Uh, that band, that like dance pop band from the '90s, La Bouche. Oh boy! Did you know? You know, I, I know them, right, but I can't here, think of the on. song that they're known for. Sweet dreams, and not those, not that sweet dreams. Yeah, not Annie Lennox's sweet, sweet dreams. Like, or in "Be My Lover." Yes, this. Yes, uh-huh. <laughs> absolutely. I'll name that tune in three syllables, Bob. <laughs> ba da da, la da da. Done, la da da done. Yeah, dude. So I have this record. Like I have this fucking CD, man. I, oh I, wow. I played that shit. I had a soft spot for 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 certain kinds of like dance pop and shit in sure. the, in the mid to late nineties. So like I had like Ricky Martin, especially like that like that sort of Enrique Iglesias, Ricky Martin, Latin pop explosion that mm-hmm. sort of happened. I was 
I was I was all about buying those records and not fucking telling y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> oh, good 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 so uh yeah yeah i think i think some of that with with these soundtracks has to do with where um pop music was at and where it was going in japan at the time because these are japanese games sure uh Right, 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 and that that is another aspect of it that it's like it's impossible for me to put it's, context on because yeah. I I have no concept. Sure, yeah, of of what would have been considered a pop music element, right, in Japan in two thousand six. Yeah, you know, I, like I barely have a concept of that for American music, <laughs> but whatever. <fair. laughs> uh, but like big, I don't say big, but like pervasive jazz influence like right. at all times right it, it feels like with yeah with a lot of the japanese music that i i have discovered uh just like a ton of jazz influence for some reason yeah i don't, I don't really exactly know why that is but they know how to make it work yeah and i there has to be something there given the that 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 it is known and understood that Japan had a thriving jazz scene like not just oh we really like american jazz but they produced a lot of great jazz right. that you know i i am extremely ignorant of but i just i know that it exists yeah. i know that it's a thing so like speaking of the the um resurgence of like synth wave and and all mm -hmm. that stuff like city pop if you've heard of that no is, ha is like another big resurgence sort of thing and that's that's primarily based on japanese 80s synth pop okay that, that has a very similar vibe in a lot of ways uh and if you're ever if you're ever looking at your recommendations on youtube you might just see one of these videos pop up because it seems to happen a lot okay these days like if you if you ever get recommended a, a a video and the thumbnail is like a lady like in a sunny day like it looks like the 80s probably like a japanese lady okay and it has a japanese title to it like check it out because it's probably some fucking city pop some dream pop or something like that okay and all the comments probably say thanks youtube algorithm for huh i don't know but it, it it goes hand in hand to me with with the synth wave resurgence because it's like a similar vibe. In okay, okay. So there's there's that part of it, but yeah, jazz obviously, uh, hip hop was and has been at this point a huge influence uh, in Japanese pop. Mm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So you can hear that a little bit, and there's a lot more of it on the soundtrack and on uh, some of the other soundtracks too. Yeah, there's a. I haven't watched it yet, but there's a there's a video that. A shorter one that FD did about about K-pop. Okay. And so and and like the I don't I don't know the in depth of but his basic <laughs> he he's like y'all just ripping off fucking nineties R and B. <laughs> yeah, I That's mean all y'all are fucking doing. I mean yeah. <laughs> um, and so anyway, um, I <laughs> it, it, it it there is an interesting. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I <laughs> just because Japanese people are 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 taking are taking hip hop and doing things with it doesn't mean it's not also doesn't mean it can't also be cultural appropriation. <laughs> is sure. Is maybe what I'm saying. Uh but uh anyway, that's a whole other mess. That's a whole that that whole that whole topic is real nebulous and real tricky because there's a weird there's a fine line between you know like just being influenced by something like what do you what, what's the difference between like oh no man I'm just legitimately influenced by this music and I love it and it's now coming out of me and then also like well I mean I just want to look cool so I'm just gonna borrow these elements and let them serve my purpose and then once and once they've served the purpose I'm going to discard these elements and that's kind of yeah you know yeah that's a that's a that's a tough line i i'm not equipped to, to speak about that at this point <laughs> yeah uh same but uh all right so this portal song oh yeah oh so so real quick did, you said you liked those soundtracks you liked those i did the music i did 
So I like I I had I liked these soundtracks when they came out and like I was listening to them when they came out. Uh, and then so two, th- three and four came out right after, one right after the other like that. And then five came out a few years ago. And in going back through those, um, as I played them, I remember like four came along and I was like, man, four is this this soundtrack is way the fuck better than threes. But then going back over time and especially this time going back to listen to those again that three soundtrack is just like killer the whole way <laughs> nice. like i i absolutely love it um, nice it, it holds up very well nice yeah it um it felt like I, I mean it was it was hard to wrap my head around you mm-hmm. know a lot of the because i didn't have a concept of the gameplay like like the Half Life stuff was kind of easy for me to like okay I get what this is I get what it's doing yeah you know, um, and even Eve or I mean even all of the other music was really a a lot easier to sort of pin down than this it was just mm-hmm. weird but it wasn't but it wasn't weird so like in the way that some of the Castlevania or the or the Final Fantasy stuff was in the sense that okay well this is like some fucking you know so you got some jazz fusion you know computer shit or or like you know or whatever it was weirder in a different way yeah i actually question if if context of the game would help you there at all i'm I'm certain i don't know that it would (laughs) i i mean it would it would it would it would yeah man i don't know music's pretty weird like i'm thinking about it from what i know of the game and like does it would you actually get anything from that i don't know I, Uh i wonder I kind of doubt it, but I wonder. Yeah, but it's it's fascinating music for sure. It's really interesting, and I, and I think that, that that was my main takeaway. Like, it's almost psychedelic and disorienting to listen to that juxtaposition of elements. Yeah, it is. It is. And so, and but but that might not be as disorienting to me if I was more aware of Japanese pop music in general. Uh, that's right, pro- probably true. Yeah. You know. Because that's sort of like a weird, you know, like all these things are sort of cross pollinating and whatnot, you know, and and so and not everything, not everything is 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 progressing in step. Right. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Um. So the so, lyrics to this fucking Portal song. Yes. So 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 Portal is a game that was also developed by Valve, the guys who did Half-Life right. 2 and a bunch of other shit. Uh, but it's a puzzle game, and it's it's got a similar vibe, though. It's like you are, you're trapped in this research facility, and an AI is getting you to do uh, these tests, these experiments that she set up. Uh, and, okay. And she is very friendly, but also obviously very psychotic at the same time underneath. Uh so is this so the person singing this song is, is the, the AI. AI? Okay, that yes. was that was that's that's what yeah. I was fixing to ask. So so the song that I that I put on here, the, the the rest of the soundtrack is is very good as well, but this is the ending credits song after you've finished the game and you've blown her up. <sighs> these fucking lyrics, dude. <laughs> By themselves, these lyrics would be like hold hold the fucking phone. But then there's just the song itself. And the song itself, without any lyrics, would be like, hold the fucking phone. <laughs> so this is weird. Yeah. Uh, but you put all this together and it's it is it is it's it's weird, it's psychedelic, it's beautiful. So I, I I'm guessing it says it on there somewhere, but this was actually these lyrics were written by Jonathan Colton. Okay. He is a sort of, uh, I don't know if he's a comedian. He's kind of like a Bo Burnham in a way. Okay. Kind of dude. He does shit like that. He does like performative, like musical, not theater, but like, you know, it's not just music, but he's like performs. Yeah. Um, so he's one of those kind of dudes. He does like comedic songs, uh, but he wrote this for this soundtrack. Okay. I think this is the only thing he did for the soundtrack. Okay. Uh, and he came back for Portal 2 and wrote one for that soundtrack too, but. So what the fuck is Aperture Science? So that's the name of the company who owns the research facility. Okay. Who you're you're in. Okay. Basically. Okay. And okay. so, in in the Half Life games, there's a company called Black Mesa. 
That's I was going to ask. And Aperture Science... That was a joke. Ha ha. Fat chance. (laughs) Aperture Science rises up as like a competitor to Black Mesa and they do everything they can to like talk shit about them and downplay them. Meanwhile, Black Mesa in these other games have like... They've they've realized multi-dimensional travel and all this shit. And so these guys are trying to catch up by, by doing these like insane experiments. Um... Yeah, so that it all ties in. Now these points of data make a beautiful line, and we're out of beta. We're releasing on time, <laughs> yeah. dude. It's just it was wonderful. Well, and there's like, cause there's nodes in these lyrics that are. And when did this game come out? Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Yeah, there's nodes in these lyrics that are very. You could take certain lines. And and these are dashboard confessional songs, like <laughs> really, like these are these are like emo, these are emo 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 mm. guy in his bedroom with an acoustic guitar songs. Th- I think that's that probably pretty well describes Jonathan Colton. I would say okay it is my is my guess. I don't know all of his other work, but I feel like that's the vibe. But you know, like I'm not even angry. I'm being so sincere right now, even though you broke my heart and killed me. Oh, okay, sure. And tore me to pieces and threw every piece into a fire as yes. they burned it hurt me because I was so happy for you. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That kind of like setup, 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 one, <clears> two. <throat> you know what I mean? Like you hurt me, you hurt me, you hurt me, but I'm happy for you. Oh, that, that's, that's funny. That I thought is, about it like that. That is, pr- that is primo emo fodder. Oh, that's okay. Right there. Like I that gotcha. is That is early 2000s primo emo. Primo emo. <laughs> And that, um, and so like the cut, co- like the context that you have, like a emo AI. <laughs> yes, the, because so the whole game, the whole game, the whole game is you going through these test chambers, and she's there all the time talking at you, and saying things like, you know, it's going to be so great when you do all these tests, and there's going to be cake at the end, and it's going to be wonderful, and you're going to love these. There's you're doing so well, but eventually, she kind of slowly turns and she's like well, you know you're doing so great but wouldn't it be a shame if you died on this test wouldn't that be a shame oh you're doing so great and it, it, that slowly creeps in I see. and towards about the, at the at about the middle of the game she's like tries to basically dump you into a flaming vat of just like death okay and she's like yeah just go in there it's gonna be fine like this is the next test just have fun and if you if you realize as a player that you can like jump over here and go back behind the walls and shit and subvert what she wants, then you just die. But if you do realize that, she's like, wait, what are you doing? Where are you going? And she's out of control now. And it just spirals from there. Wow. Uh, it's, it's very effective in that way. It's exactly what you're talking about. Like well, that that personality is how the character is in the game. Wow. And this, this these lines of, you know, I have experiments to run. There's research to be done. On those that are still alive. I'm doing science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know, and it's funny because, like, not having the context of knowing anything about the game and trying to interpret these lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, you know. So like, there's, like, three levels removed from what. Right, because there's this meta aspect of it, of, like, the beta and we're releasing on time kind of thing. Like, And I was, I was like, okay, is this, like, someone – is this like someone working? Because I, I I had a concept of sort of the the set and setting of, of of the game or the vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of 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 Portal, I never played it, but 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 like, is this is this like someone you're working with? You know, like someone else in this factory or this whatever you know kind of thing. Uh, yep, nope, no it's antagonistic it's a, AI, antagonistic murderous AI. <laughs> So, oh, man. yeah, that, that, yeah. The, 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 good. I, yeah. I, I didn't know how that would play. And I just wanted to pick that <laughs> one because it's such a good, it's such a good song on its own even. But yeah. It, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hit you when, when we stop recording here, I'm going to hit you with a, with a few like dashboard confessional snippets. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So, um, <sighs> well, but yeah, man, that's, that's I think that's it. That was that was part two there. So, uh, but yeah, we'll we'll be back 
um so the day today this is october 21st mm -hmm. we have like three months of these recorded and i haven't released a single one yet <laughs> <laughs> but i'm getting there i'm getting there it's coming I'm, along i'm getting there yeah so slowly um, but surely so anyway uh whatever however this shit lands so we'll be back quote unquote next week <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take a little a little a little deviation Oh. A little deviant. We're gonna, put, we're gonna put down the controller for a bit. <laughs> we're gonna put down Let's the controller say. and we're gonna and we're gonna pick up the scalpel oh, and the meat cleaver and uh and we're we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about death metal a little bit. Uh -huh. So but anyway, adios. So yeah.